there as well. Um, you can go through all of those different sections as well. So you've got the fabrics and the tools. So we've categorised things for you to make it that a little bit easier to find things. So have a perusal. Um, but if you want to shop anything that's actually live in the show, click on Watch Live. There you go. So that's the actual show, like what is on right now on Telebox. And um, you'll see all of the products that are associated with the show at the size there. Now then, we will, you're, no, you can pre-order. So you, you can actually order things before we've shown them on air. Um, so all you need to do is to click on the, on the uh, pre-order side there. So when we've actually talked about stuff, then it will go into the, um, the regular slot where you can just buy. But if you wanted to get ahead of the game and order things that we haven't shown you yet, then, um, then you can do that. You've got the option to do that. Um, oh, now that we've got a deal for you as well, because we're, we're celebrating our new website. It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Um, so anybody who places an order over the weekend that's over £20 is going to receive a £5 credit to your account. Now, that is per person. So if you've already ordered something yesterday, then you're not going to get another fiver today. Um, so just £5 per person. And that's not bad, you know, because that's what 25%, isn't it? back in your account and if you already had account with the previous website then you don't have to re-register you you you're all there we know you're there oh morning sylvie she's in bed <laughs> and it's dull in hereford morning christine morning angela uh, morning lorraine and morning anna morning carol and morning linda um, and louise bright start to the day in dublin looking forward to a lovely show uh, morning kirsty she's watching with a cup of coffee i've got my cup of coffee um, i think my record last time i was here was four cold coffees throughout the course of a morning um, Ellen morning Debbie she says and the crew hope you all have a good Sunday thank you very much so if you want to come and get in touch um, I'm on the Facebook page and when you go to the Facebook you can see Facebook live or the live show and all your comments are underneath there um, I know from last week a lot of people were leaving visitor comments I'm, I'm not reading the I read them after um, but I'm not reading those live so if you want a question answering immediately morning Barbara um, you can uh, you can go to the Facebook page um, or you can email us if you like it's studio at sewingstreet.com we have Hannah producer this morning waiting in the wings to take your emails and we have cat producing this morning as well other way around cats directing this morning Hannah is producing I don't, I don't listen don't listen to them anyway to be honest so so we have two early birds for you today and you found them already we're on pre-order so let's take a look at these panels now you've seen the flower of the month panels um, this is a similar idea but it's not a similar price so the um, the flower of the month panels are 9.99 I oh, know these are not at all 9.99 and lots of you are more children these as well they're five pounds 99 so the same size as the flower of the month you've got a 12 inch square this one with scare spooky cat and uh, and then you've got all of those two and a half inch wide strips what are you going to make from that is it going to be we don't put it with the flower of the month panels because that's that would just look weird wouldn't it <laughs> A little cat bed would be a nice idea, wouldn't it? Or I tell you, you could, you could make um, a, a cat mat and put some um, lamy fix on it. So it's, a, so it's a wipe clean mat. That'd be nice. <laughs> so you could make yeah, little Halloween bags, Halloween cushions, Halloween decorations to hang in the window, Halloween wall hangings. Or maybe you just love cats. Um, or we could embroider it, you could do a little bit of free motion on there. You don't have to use all of those strips with the panel, so you could use those separately. These are exclusive to Sewing Street and they are designed and produced here in the UK as well, which is quite, quite nice, isn't it? So I'd love to know, I mean, lots of you buying these already, so I'd love to know what your plans are. When you see that, what, you, what you're going to make. Then we have the harvest panel. So not spooky, this one, and not necessarily Halloween. It's just autumnal, isn't it? So we've got pumpkins and apples and flowers and is that corn? 
um, and a sycamore leaf and a, a bit of thistleage going on and some poppy heads. Um, £5.99 again is your prize. That's the 12 inch square you're looking at. And then you've got all of the panels. I like the colours on this one. I like the greys. I think it's quite soft. Grey in the background. I love the way that all the, the, like the panels, the panels on the pumpkin, the different sections on the pumpkin have like um, a fabric print to them. I do like that. So I'd make oh, lots of these in baskets, brand new for you this morning. Um, I said that I'd make, make cushions out of this one. Maybe, maybe go for two and then, um, yeah, and then make some cushions. Might have to make them a little bit bigger because 12 inches isn't so big. But then you've got all of these strips at the side that you could um, just keep adding borders and make it bigger and bigger and bigger, couldn't you? A door hanging thing. I think a door hanging thing cut is a very good idea and I'm sure there is a name for it. Pretty though, aren't they? <laughs> and again, a five pounds and 99 pence is your price and that's as big as it is, look, it's huge. <laughs> right, they do come in separate panels. So if you multi-buy, you're not going to get one big long strip. You will have them, they're all cut up. And if, you, if you're buying one, then you come back later and you think, oh, I wish I'd have bought another one. You're only going to pay that one PMP all day. Hi, and thank you. Oh, hi, Jen. Uh, she says, morning, Debbie, and all the Sewing Street Sunday gang. We're the Sewing Street Sunday gang. We're getting a woohoo in the gallery. Um, Jenny's in bed. Um, Alec, Alex, Alex, can you go and make Jenny a cuppa, please? She's in bed. Okay. Um, that's you sort of. Morning, Janice. Morning, Louisa. She's just got up. Time to call this for getting up. It's ten past eight. Um, Kirsty's got a cup of coffee. Have we caught up with everybody? Uh, morning, Angela. Morning, Sandy. It's dull in Anglesey this morning. Uh, it's dull in Western Supermare. Oh, Alan's made a horse fabric handbag. We're going to see that, I'm sure. Um, Pauline's just woken up. Um, Carol's got hers. I'm, I'm assuming you've got your early bird. Lovely. Morning, Glennis. Well, Glennis is up and dressed. At least that's something. Now, remember, no housework this morning. OK. Um, Although we're getting some kind of provisions with the Boris rule on a weekend morning um, because I was asked yesterday if crafting counts. You can, you can do that because that's not really a chore, is it? And you can use your washing machine on a Sunday morning as long as you're pre-washing fabric because it's not housework then, is it? Uh, morning, Glennis. Morning, Hannah. Um, <laughs> No, no not, not our Hannah. That's Hannah Linton morning. Uh, Jane's in Liverpool this morning. Oh, Fiona's messaged in. Um, she's another one in bed. What do you like? You lot staying in bed having cups of tea. Can't do it. If my eyes are open, I'm up. I, don't, I can't lie in bed. Um, Anne says the panel with the pumpkin would be lovely embellished with embroidery treads, um, threads. I think that would be a... a that would be a really nice idea. Oh, like gold on with little seed beads on there. Make it a really glamorous pumpkin. I think that would be lovely. Um, Adele's woken up too and needs a cup of coffee. Are you up though? Are you woken up or are you up? Looking forward to a crafting day. Um, is this everybody that's ordering? Oh, this is it's so busy. Name scrolling across the screen. I think there's so many of you ordering at the moment. You're popping up on the telly. <laughs> Morning, Barbara. <laughs> oh, it is busy. We like a busy Sunday, don't we? Um, Patricia's messaged in. Morning, Patricia. And, um, oh, she says, Morning, Debbie. Sorry, I'm having to look over it. Watching in bed. You're watching in bed? After what? So you've got up and walked the dogs and then gone back to bed again? Okay. So you, do, would you put your clothes on over your nighty, go and walk the dogs and then go and climb back into bed again? <laughs> you like, who's got a sewing machine in bed then? Who's sitting in bed sewing this morning? Is that what you do on a Sunday morning? <laughs> uh, morning, Linda. She's just about to get, Linda's in bed. You're a lazy lot, you lot. Uh, Nikki says, morning, Debbie. Sewing in loads of crochet ends while I watch. I, I can't. Can't get on with crochet. Um, Angelina's having a, 
a cup of tea in bed, her husband's bringing a one. <laughs> Barbara wants a naughty Sunday. I think we're having a naughty Sunday. Everybody's in bed this morning. I don't know what they're doing. Watching telly, I'm hoping. So, no, no. Oh, now, Bev's messaged in. Um, <laughs> what's Bev say? I can't, I can't see. She says, oh, hi, Debbie. Um, I've just ordered the spooky cat for a daughter whose birthday is on Halloween. Oh, I hope she's not watching. So, oh, are, you, are you going to make her something or just give her the panel? Does she sew? So that would be a bit nice, wouldn't it? Um, and the cat is your favourite out of the two. See, I thought you'd go pumpkins. I thought you'd be going for the harvest one, but you're obviously, obviously cat lovers. <laughs> um, Bev in Leicestershire, she's got hers as well. Oh. <laughs> we're, having, we're having a bumper morning. So this, this is all quite new. I've not been in since we have had the new website. So I, how, how do those names come up then? They're just... Oh. Oh, apparently. So um, the gallery's right, right behind you lot in bed. Um, <laughs> one of these days, we'll spin the cameras around so you can see. But I, I can actually see Kat and Hannah there. So I was just asking how the names come up. And apparently there has to be so many hundred of you ordering all at the same time. And then the names automatically start coming up. We're having a bit of a bumper morning this morning already. <laughs> I wonder what spooked the cat. Hmm. Oh, now we've put some fabrics to go together with these as well. Um, so this is the autumn bundle. If, if any, anything that we have in stock that has the word autumn on it, we've got in the show today. Um, but we put together a bundle of fabric for you, um, all in colours that coordinate with the panels. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five fabrics. And they're just really, you don't have to go for these with the, with the panels, you can just buy them on their own. I just think they're really lovely, warm, autumnal kind of colours. All 100% cotton and only £17.99, which is a pretty good price. So we have hot tomato, we have a claret, we have brunette and yellow spots and tan spots. And there's half a metre of each one of these all together. Um, and they're all 112 centimetres wide. Again, all 100% cotton. Make a nice combination. That'd make a nice quilt, wouldn't it? If you're doing a little bit of patchwork. Oh, busy for these as well. <laughs> we, oh, we're, we're down to single figures for these. And I told you it was busy this morning. Um, oh, Alan sent his horse picture to the studio. Lovely. We'll have a look at that. Uh, morning, Linda. There's chilly there. Um, <laughs> Carol's been up since 6am. The dogs have no concept of it's dark and cold, only we need to pee, we don't care. Um, so I, my dog's not like that. Um, she's, she won't go out if it's raining, for a start. She's terrified of it. So, oh, they, uh, this is about to sell out, by the way. Um, but normally when I'd, I'm up about three o'clock in the morning and um, she goes to get into bed with my son. <laughs> um, Jan's had a cup of tea brought to her in bed. Maura, she's get, just getting, oh no, you had a busy night. Looking forward to Tuesday, then she's got 14 days off. Bet you haven't. <laughs> um, Lisa likes being part of the Dunday crew. <laughs> don't, you, don't you love spell check? <laughs> Actually, Saturday should be done day, shouldn't it? Because that's the end of the week done. And then we go on to Sunday as a start of a brand new week. Um, oh, so this, that's going to go, isn't it? Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to... might use some of those. And I'm going to take these. And I'm going to take that. And I'm going to take... I'm not going home. I'm just going over to the other set. And we're going to come over here. Um, right. Now, I, I did say anything with the word autumn on it that's stuck on the show. So we've got pumpkin buttons, look. Brand new today, and guess what? They're about to sell out. 
Um, these are just cute. All different sizes. So you could decorate um, your cat panel, maybe. Um, you could decorate your pumpkins with it, actually. That's a bit fuzzy, isn't it? Unless, unless it was just me. I'll put that down so it's, it's sitting still. Um, I wouldn't use them as buttons on a cardy, to be honest, because they're, they're, go they're going to catch on the buttonholes, but they make nice little decorations. You could put them on a bag. You could put them on maybe a headband or a little belt or something like that. Um, and they're only, they're only £2.99. Now, you wouldn't, would you? You wouldn't buy that on its own, would you? £2.99 with £3.95 postage. But if you do, now anything else that you order for the rest of the day, you're not going to pay any postage for. Um, so if you've already ordered your, um, your early bird, your panel or panels, as many as you like, um, then you're not going to pay any extra postage for that. So it's kind of worth looking on the website and, um, and have a look at, I'm opening it, and having a look at um, all the different bits and bobs that we do. So it's a good opportunity, once you've paid your postage, to think, well, I need some needles, I need some pins. Look at these. They're cute. Um, I've had a message from Christine that's going to come up at the bottom of the screen. And she says, morning, Debbie and team. Morning, Christine. She's just ordered two pumpkin panels. Lovely. One's for a daughter. And, oh, she's got her granddaughter, Charlotte. Oh, she's four years old and she's sewing with you. I think that is such a lovely idea. I wonder if these would go on there. Yeah. Woo! Oh, that's one less. <laughs> yeah, these, these, are, these are now mine. I'm going to have to buy these because I've opened them and I've lost one. So there's one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There will be ten in your packet altogether. No idea where that's gone. But they're all different sizes. They're all different shapes and sizes, and they've all got their own little characters. Look, that one's having a good old giggle. There they are. So that's just a little bit of fun. Talking of which, we've got a brand new colouring panel for you. Which is this? Have you seen these before? I think it's such a good idea. Um, we've got lots of pens in different colours for you if you don't have any of your own. Um, but basically, I'll show you the size of this first of all. You've got a huge panel to colour in, young or old. And it's quite detailed as well. There's so much on this. Look! <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? It's got little vampires and they've got the toffee apples and a really scary ghost, spiders, leaves, exclusive to Sewing Street again and um, brand new for you this morning, got little pumpkins and got old oh, the witch there as well, look, I think that's the same cut, still spooked and the candles, and little bats, look, there's loads of detail, I, I like little things to colour in personally but um, it's quite therapeutic isn't it? Um, so you can get the kids to colour it in and then maybe make pillows for them, pillowcases or um, cushions to cuddle or maybe bags to take to school or, um, I don't know, what are you going to make out of them? And, and you know, all of these vampires aren't just for Halloween, they're all year round. <laughs> but there's only the pumpkins that are quite autumnal on this, aren't there? So the, this, this could be witches and wizards maybe, if, uh, if your kids are fans of those. Oh, a pyjama bag. That would be a nice idea. A hot water bottle cover, maybe. Ooh, you can make toys out of them. Quite big ones. There's a lot of fabric in there. Again, it's all 100% cotton. And um, we've got some pens for you to colour in with as well. So that's, that's going to be loads of fun. Um, Sally Ann loves the pumpkin buttons. Lovely. Um, <laughs> Kirsty never gets a lion. She says the cats get breakfast at 6.30 in the week and have no concept of a weekend, so come and demand food at silly o'clock. <laughs> morning, Chris. Um, Susan says, morning, Debbie. I'm up, I'm showered, I'm breakfasted, and now settle down to watch you for the morning. Let's see what I can buy this morning. And Ange, Angie, morning. What's it like in Great Yarmouth this morning? It was. Uh, everyone's saying it's quite miserable outside. It's, it wasn't... It wasn't raining this morning. It was dark when we came in, but it's not raining. It wasn't raining. 
I'm going to have a little play. Should we do? Better do that one because those are throwing themselves at me. Um, I'll have a mat under here. Just because I don't want to mark a new table. So these are bright um, pens. You'll have to give them a good old shake and prep them um, when you get them home. They're on pre-order at the moment, but that means that you can actually order them. Oh, it doesn't bleed. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's nice. Have you ever tried using felt pens on fabric? As soon as you put it on there, it just bleeds like mad. But these don't. Um, and they are designed for fabric and you can put them in the washing machine afterwards and the colour's not going to run, so they're, they're permanent as well. Morning, Sue. Sue's up but not dressed. Sue, are you naked? I don't know. It is, it is a bit of a naughty Sunday morning this morning, isn't it? We've got people dog walking in their nighties and sitting in bed with being spoilt with cups of tea and coffee. Did, did Alex bring you your cup of Jen? It's quite therapeutic, this, isn't it? Maybe you can have a blue waistcoat. I'm quite impressed with these. That's really nice. A really nice dense ink. Hmm. Yeah, almost, almost, almost like a paint pen. And of course, you can use these on. Um, <laughs> you can you can colour in your cycle helmet. Look, it says on there. Um, we all like to colour in our surfboards, don't we? I know I, know I like mine coloured in, certainly. Um, you can colour in your shoes with the... Oops. Yeah. And not just for fabric as well. We've got loads of bundles for these. You can use them on ceramics. You can use them on wood. Just so you can, you can colour everything in with those. Colour your pumpkins in. Um, was that Hugh? Oh, Kim. Oh, hello. Morning. Um... Could you make a throw? Oh, now then, with the new hat, with the with these ones or with that one, with these one. I'm assuming these. What you make? What you could do? Um, you can make a quilt out or whatever you like. That's it. I'm blue now. Yes, you can do. Um, you can have go, go for a few panels though, otherwise you have a very small quilt, but it depends what you're going to do with it. Um, it's, a, it's a shame actually there's not, they're not mirror image, so if you, have, if you go for two cats, they're going to be both facing in the same way. Um, but I would maybe do, maybe have one cat and three pumpkins. And then if you're using the, um, the strips as, um, as a bit of sashing, that would be, so that's 12 inches. 14, 15, 16. You could probably do four squares that are about 18 inches square if you join four together. And then that's going to be, be about a metre square, won't it? So that's not a bad size if you've got a lap quilt or if you're making a wall hanging out of it. Um, and there's no reason why you couldn't incorporate these with the flower of the month. Have a look on the website for those. We should have all of those in stock because they're all the same size and everything. They're all very different colours. So you could put it in there. It might stand out a little bit, the black cat one. Um, but maybe the pumpkin one we do. Hmm. And again, these are only £5.99. Um, if you've already got the Christmas panels, we brought you, with the, I think there are two Christmas panels. Uh, there's a poncetta and there's a wreath, if I remember rightly. So you could have a seasonal quilt, so maybe a couple of flowers, then your two Christmas, and then your two Halloween would look nice. That would be a bit more of a substantial quilt size as well, wouldn't it? Been really busy for these. Shall we, shall we do something? I'm, shall we use that one? I'm going to use a pumpkin one. We're going to make a little bag. Um, because I like that one. Right, so let's have that there. Um, we'll have some H640 on the back of that. Which needs ironing on. 
So let's cut this out. I'm, you can use your rotary cutter ruler and mat with these, but um, I just thought it might be a bit quicker to cut. They're not very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm using H640. It needs something on the back of it. So if you're quilting, you're going to be fine because you'll have um, your wadding. Um, but if you're making a bag out of these, I'd like something a little bit more substantial behind them. So if you've got some interfacing, I think that would work. If you have some foam, that would work. But we've got H640, which is a fusible fleece. So let's do that. So it just makes a nice, a nice little cushion, actually, wouldn't it? That, or actually, that'd be a really decent sized pin cushion, wouldn't it? <laughs> and that's, oh yeah, oh, oh, now then, go for two, and then you can kind of, uh, almost like a, a decoupage if you're a paper crafter, wouldn't it? Um, you could actually stuff the pumpkin in the center. Mmm, mmm, oh, oh, oh. Oh, let's do that. I'll only do it with the one piece. I cut another piece the same size as that. And then I might need a bit of backing fabric. Um, so I'm just going to be a lot more accurate if you are going to do something like this at home. And I think rotary cutter ruler and mat <laughs> would be the best way to go I love the colour, I love the greys and, and again the way that um, the pumpkins kind of all shaded and faded thank you, while, while you're there Hannah I've dropped all my fabric down the front Thank you. <laughs> I'm whispering like you can't hear that at home, can you? <laughs> um, right, how are we going to do this? Let me have a think. Is this my backing fabric? Um, if, you, oh, if you wanted this specific colour, it's NCLJ10 as the item number. We don't have it on the show, but we do have it on the website. That goes very well as well, actually. Right, so I'm just going to cut... Hopefully, feel this is going to work. Have a little piece just to go at the back of the pumpkin because I'm going to put a lining in the bag anyway. Okay. Might not actually get made into a bag because I'm, I'm going a little off piste now. So that can go on there, and then I'm going to sew literally around the edge of the pumpkin. Just around the fat bit. With a shorter stitch. Stop with the needle down. So I'm hoping this works. This would make a, a nice little quilt idea as well actually <coughs> so let's go should have the same color thread really but but we got white <laughs> and we've, we've got so much brown thread so let's I guess I'd use the same color thread or maybe a clear thread and I'm quite partial to a bit of free motion embroidery. I actually find it easier to go around shapes like this than using a, a straight stitch. Oh, now with the panel, almost half of the stock sold out now. We like, oh, down. We like to keep these in stock for a while because the shows are repeated and everything. We know that you're gonna want these in days to come, so. Morning Paulie, or Paula, morning Paula. Uh, she loves the new website. And she's what, sorry? She's in Mauritius, how lovely. 
We went to Mauritius oh, years ago. My daughter was um, three and my son wasn't around then. Um, <laughs> it, we, went, we went in February. So, of course, middle of winter over here. Um, so by the, by the time we got there, straight to the beach like you do. So I had the only child on the beach in Mauritius with um, a thermal vest on. <laughs> it's very hot. It's very lovely. Right, I'm going to make a little hole in the back of this. Only through that backing, not through the whole fabric. Then I'm going to stuff it. We do have toy stuffing on the website. <laughs> oh look, it's working! It just it doesn't always work. <laughs> my my plans and my ideas, particularly when I come up with something on the spur of the moment. But look, I got a fat pumpkin. Now then, I, I would maybe that's a little bit too fat. I wonder if I can sew. I'm going to take a little bit out and see if I can just top stitch it. Let's have a look. Um, do a longer stitch again. We well, don't know till you try, do you? All right, so. <laughs> oh, this is going to look so good. Oh, we could do the same with the cat. You go around there. Come on. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Oh, I love this. Oh, I've got a little pinch in there, never mind. Oh, oh, don't look at the back. Look, I got a fat pumpkin. Isn't that nice? So if I just turn it up to there, look. You can see the lumps in it. Is that good? <laughs> I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to, I'm going to trim the back of this back because it's all over the place at the back. <laughs> it kind of got a bit folded when I was sewing, but no one's, no one's going to notice that. So we'll have that trimmed away. Oh, now some of you are buying five or six of them. I bet they're going to be gifts, aren't they? I bet they're going to be presents. Right. Oh, bear with, I couldn't find the, I'm done with plug hole. There we go. And we'll have the 8640 on the back of there now. Making a bit of oh, coffee, cold coffee. <laughs> now then, that's all gathered up in the middle a little bit, so I'm going to try and stretch it out a bit. So let's start here. And I'll just try and flatten this out as I'm ironing. But obviously I'm not going to iron over that bit because it's, it's just too thick. <laughs> it's working, isn't it? It's flattening up nicely. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, 
this this <laughs> this wasn't a plan actually at all. It was yeah. Right, let's. Oh, I'm just not. The, I didn't see the point in ironing the pumpkin because the heat isn't going to go all the way through that that padding to get to the H640 behind it. That's worked really well, hasn't it? Because that's flattened all the fabric out as well. Oh, right. Shall we? Well, where are we? Oh. I was going to do so much in this. Shall I make a little cushion instead? Because that's going to be a bit quicker anyway. Um, so let's trim this back. Do you know, I could do, I'd do French knots on here and then maybe a chain stitch on the corn. And I wouldn't have done that in white. Um, so this was, a, this was a little impromptu. It always is on a Sunday morning, to be honest. I never know what I'm doing. Um, th that would be nice with your metallic thread, wouldn't it? And do maybe a, just a running stitch down there. And then you could embroider over the, the veins on the leaves, maybe more, or little star stitches on the top of here. And I would sew all the way around, I'm going to do that. I would sew all the way around there as well to just give it a little bit of a quilted look. I'll do that anyway. And then we'll just put it back on it. So I like to, to just sew through the borders like this because it looks as though it's been pieced together then. One more stitch. Come on. There we go. And I've got a longer stitch on this one because it's not a seam. And that's going to help the fabric stay flat again too. It's worth it, isn't it? I could really go to town with these. Maybe a few little sequins, a little tiny seed beads would be nice. I'll tell you what you could make out of them. If you bought two of each of them you can make a lovely storage box maybe somewhere to keep the cat treats there we go okay that's that that's that now i'd already cut out one piece for a backing hadn't i let's see what we can do with that Yeah. So let's have another piece like that. Pumpkin's in the lead now. I think a lot of you buying one of each as well. Hannah's just, Hannah's just explained why she hasn't got very many friends. She's got a friend she calls Pumpkin because she's got a round head and a bob. <laughs> oh, and it's, and it's a, a ginger bob. I'm just going to cut that to a length that would overlap and we'll just do a really simple envelope back in on this one. So I'll hem that bit. So just fold that over twice. And so, now remember we do, if you just joined us, we have the, the cat panel and the pumpkin panel. They go together very nicely, if you wanted to go for one of each. They're only £5.99, which is four pounds less than the flower panel so it's a great time to order and these are your early birds so they, they will be back um, I'm sure or will they be back I don't know if they will be back but I'm not sure if they'll be 5.99 because that's the early bird price might be I don't know I'm not not in charge of money um, collector oh collector in Devon has messaged in hello with the cat panel Oh, 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 
Now she's saying about um, buying three of the cats and using the fabric slasher to make the cat fluffy. You'd have to be really accurate with the cutting. Uh, to be honest, it would probably be easier without the fabric slasher cutter if you did it with a pair of scissors. But that's a nice idea. Um, so you'd need... Um, yeah, three of those would be nice. That would work well, maybe four even. And then I would sew very carefully around the whole of the edge of the cat and then sew in diagonal lines through all of the layers, just again across the cat so they don't go on the background, um, maybe half an inch apart. And then with a fine pair of scissors, just cut down the top two layers. So the back, the bottom layer stays intact and you're just cutting the top two and then get a scrubbing brush and give it a good old scrub and it'll go fluffy um, cut the um, the diagonals uh, cut make the slashes diagonal not vertical or horizontal because if you do it vertical or horizontal it's going to fray like mad if you um, cut it diagonal it doesn't fray it just goes fluffy so that has a, a better effect but that is a really good idea I'd try and put something sparkly in its eyes as well, I think. Right, let's overlap these at the back. So, right sides together. And that one on the top. And we'll stick a couple of pins in there to hold those bits together. And then we sew all the way around. So noodle down in the corner. This is the, um, the little 550 I'm using, by the way, which I think is probably the only sewing machine we've got in stock at the moment. It's very busy for sewing machines around, around the world, actually. Oh, and let me give you a reminder as well, because we've got a new website, any excuse for a special offer, to be honest, because we've got a new website, we're giving you an offer whereby if you spend £20 or more, we will credit £5 to your Sewing Street account. Um, that is that is per person, not per, per order. So you just get one shot, basically. And that's for anybody, you can be brand new to us today, you can be an existing customer, it's just just because we can. Almost done there. Then we'll have those pins out. We will snip across the corners. Like so. We'll turn this the right side out. And push, oh, there we go. Push the corners out with something that's not scissors. Right, there we go. And then, it's only, a, it's only a diddy cushion, so I'm just going to use some toy filler for it. That might, if I'm going to have that nice and plump, it may open up a little bit. So I might put a couple of stitches in there because I'm not going to do that now. Um, I'll put a pin in it for now and then not forget that that's there. There, and it's finished and it's, it's dimensional look because it's got, it's got the padding inside it. That's quite nice, isn't it? Oh, I'm rather pleased with that. See, I was going to make a tote bag this morning, but that didn't quite happen, did it? Um, shall we pop that there? There. Oh, Elizabeth sent a message. Hello, Elizabeth. Um, she says, oh, great, Emma. Thank you very much. I'll just make it up as I go. Um, I started off sewing again after a few years. 
and it's her kind of sewing. Oh, thank you, Liz. I really appreciate that. Um, oh, Bonnie, thank you. Don't go on, have a go. It's not. It's only a bit of sewing, isn't it? Um, glow in the dark threads. That's a nice idea, Alan. Oh, you could do that on the cat's eyes, couldn't you? Overstitch it by hand to my tight. So that would be lovely. Morning, Raina. Uh, morning, Pearl. Thank you very much. Um, Bobbin hasn't run out yet. Oh, no, no. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> That did happen yesterday, and I haven't lost my scissors yet. A Trapunto pumpkin, absolutely, Sally Ann. Um, morning, Lady Kay, morning, Anne, um, morning, Dawn, morning, Lynn. Oh, loads of you here, aren't there? Morning, Amanda, 186. I think that's a record for me, anyway. Um, hi, Susan, thank you. Thanks, Anne. And it's sunny and great, you are lovely. Um, Dawn, you're reading my mind, I didn't see your message. So, great minds there, Dawn, isn't it? Um, morning Shelley. Can we see uh, can we see some quilting sometimes other than straight lines but not free motion? Any ideas? Ooh. Oh no, you've got straight lines coming up. Sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, Lisa had a birthday yesterday. Happy birthday! And she had some money. Oh, eight hundred double oh one double four double three. Sewing Street. You know, if you if you stuck for something to buy we've got loads of stuff for you um hi pearl in rochester hi glenish is off to church in a minute um it's chili and corn or says dawn i think we're up to date there aren't we morning aileen morning oh attila what a lovely name oh right um now then that was the early birds And the, so that was the pumpkin I was using. We do have the cat as well, but the cat's, cat's second best now. Pumpkins have overtaken cat at the moment. You could do the same with the pumpkins there, couldn't you? So you could stuff your pumpkins if you wish. <laughs> stuff your pumpkins and slash your cats, I'm, I'm hearing. <laughs> and again, that's £5.99. and pence. <laughs> Um, welcome along if you're new to Sewing Street this morning. It's always a bit like this on a Sunday. It's, it's just what it's like. And we love it. We've got colouring in panels. Um, this is the brand new Halloween panel. Look how big this is. This is going to keep you busy for hours. Um, and I, I, it doesn't come partially coloured in. I had a play earlier on. But look at those cute characters. And every little, little look, there's not even a square inch left un, unpatterned. So lots and lots of detail, lots for you to do. And of course, 100% cotton, um, use permanent inks on there. We've got loads on the show and, uh, and that's going to be washable as well. So it's huge. So that's new today. That's been really busy as well. But we also have um, a fairy tale panel, which also has a pumpkin, but I think it's more of a Cinderella carriage. Another one that's exclusive to us. So we've got the same size, but you've got wizard hats on this one, and fairy tale castles, and there's a unicorn, and uh, you can see the carriage there. There's a dragon and toastal houses, and potions and cauldrons and trees that are smiling at you. Little mice and magic keys, roses, lightning bolts, apples with bites out of them. You can almost identify the um, uh, the stories from these, couldn't you? So the, we know what the apple with the bite, who bit that. Um, you've got a magic book, so lotions and potions and unicorns and all manner. And again, that's only, uh, that's a good price, isn't it? 5 99 These are really big. And again, exclusive to us. So that's... Fairy tale, and we've got under the ocean. There you go. So identify the fish. We've got a shark. So we've got two different types of. No, we've got a whale and a shark. Um, dolphins, turtles, jellyfish, seahorses, octopus, crabs, seal, or is it a walrus? I think it's a seal. I don't know. Um, that's it, isn't it? Lots of bubbles, lots of fish, lots of stars. And again, that's only £5.99. My arm's raking now. Can you put it? Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, remember, you've only got one postage to pay all day as well. If, you, if you've already ordered something and you want to come back and have more, um, then we've got space, which is this one. Again, same size, same price. I'll just open that halfway. And we've got shooting stars, and we have um, rockets and satellites and what else have we got? We've got the Earth. <laughs> we have the Earth. We have Jupiter. We have Saturn. And that's as far as, I guess, as far as um, stars are concerned. Telescope, shooting stars. And again, what I like about these is how much detail there is. So there's, there is a lot to colour in on there. I'm not good on stars. I need to ask a five-year-old. So that's space. And, oh, and then we've got pens for you to colour in with as well. And we've bundled these. Oops, they are available separately. Sorry. <laughs> I had all my equipment slide then. I leant over and it all went whoosh. <laughs> um, so we have um, the, the, the fun and the metal in this pair. And I, I like that it gives you some ideas as to what you're going to use these on as well. Um, so, because I, 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 I like to colour in my guitar and my furniture and my lampshades and uh, and my skateboard. <laughs> yes, just just be careful if you have young children. Don't let them see what you can actually do with this. <laughs> I had a, a guitar once. My um, my. I, I was, how old would I be? My sister's boyfriend, one of her first boyfriends, so I'm going back a very long time, um, gave me a guitar. It was an acoustic guitar, and I loved it. I loved it so much. I painted it white, and I stuck pictures of Elvis, Elvis Presley on it. And I couldn't understand why he was mortified that I did that, because I thought it looked great. It sounded dreadful, but it looked great. Hmm. Am I carrying on here? Because I'm not, not, not listening to a word, you know. Um, these are all on the website. Um, so you've got the pastel and the classic. Again, we bundled those two together. Um, which is those? Oh, I think the picture on the website is a bit different for that one. Never mind. Um, so you've got the. Are these look like. Um, oh, they look like sweets, don't they? And then you've got the bright colours there as well. So that's a nice combination to go for. It kind of covers both genres. Um, that's £39.98. pence. And then we've got metal and creative. So you need to give these a good old shake to prime them when you get them home. And remember, it's not just fabric you can uh, colour in with these. They're really versatile pens. The packets, again, may look different on the web image, but this is what you're going to get. These are actually a finer tip than the ones that you saw previously. So that's those two. And then we have the classic and the pastel with a finer tip as well. So it's up to you. Um, again, all of these are available separately. If you have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com, they are on pre-order at the moment, but get them in your basket anyway if you want them. Um, Glenn, this has never made a pillowcase. Um, I know I've seen one of the video videos and I was hooked, and that was seven months ago, and her first project was one of my bags. Thank you very much. Uh, Anne says her daughter's got one of the colour colouring in panels and she's using it to practice different embroidery stitch. Never thought about that. That's a good idea. Um, have we got Alan's horse picture? Uh, morning Sue, morning Susan, um, I think we're up to date there aren't we? Now we're just about out of time here, um, Rachel is waiting in the wings and we're going to be looking at the hopscotch quilt that we see here and that's going to be coming up in a couple of minutes so I better go and get myself another hot coffee, go and put your kettle on and I'll see you in a couple of minutes time. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. 
Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break, uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well and then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it so now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool, and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil, and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection, and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters, and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. 
I then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me, maybe, is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. And anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Welcome back again. Have you got yourself, I've got myself another cuppa. Are you, you're all settled. Are you dressed yet? We've, we had n naked people this morning, I know. Um, you don't realise we can see you, do you? Um, right, we've got something a little bit different for you in the show. Rachel's with me. We'll introduce you to Rachel in just a second. Um, but we are looking at Fat Quarter Toys. And not, not just one or two or 20, but 50 Fat Quarter Toys in this book. Um, toys, I think, are a great way to start sewing. It's a nice distraction if you've got a bigger project on the go, if you're making a, um, a dress or a coat or a quilt and you just want quick projects. Fantastic if you've got little ones at Christmas time because you can make all your own toys or if you're teaching youngsters how to sew. How encouraging is that if you're going to teach them how to sew something that they can play with themselves. Um, this is £12.99 which I thought was wrong. It's £16.99 on the back mm. of the book so I'd take advantage of that. And apologies to the author if you're watching Anne. Sorry about that. We just took your price down. Um, and this is what you've got. So it's a nice big paperback book by David and Charles and lots of ideas. Um, fat quarter books as well are always really popular because you don't have to go out and buy fat quarters to make these. Um, they use small pieces of fabric. So if you've got leftovers, if you've got um, you know scraps, smaller pieces, you don't know what to do with them because you know you don't throw them away, then you've got some great ideas here to use up their smaller pieces of fabric. And he's cute, isn't he? And, um, Lots of ideas for children of lots of ages. Hunky Monkey, Monty Bear. So lots of little characters, but then we've got games and toys in here as well. So Sydney the Dog, Rosie Rabbit. I think we've seen Rosie Rabbit before, haven't we? We've got fish and cats and birds and unicorns and aliens. And if I just flick through a little, noughts and crosses. This is the, um, the hopscotch panel that we're going to be featuring in this show and we put together some fabric bundles for you as well. So you can see lots of ideas and then we have uh, these full size patterns. I do like a full size pattern um, that you trace off. So it, it's nice to see these in different colours when they're laid on top of each other like that because you can easily identify what the different panels are. So all those, all in the back, which you're going to need to make up your projects. So that's £12.99, which is a bit of a snippet. And should we have a look at what we're making, what Rachel's going to be making? This is it. Now, the, the, the pictures are in three parts because it's really long. Um, and it rolls up and ties up as well. Um, so it's nice for storage. But it's, it's, I think soft play items like this in, in the house are, are really fun. And they are all joined together. <laughs> it's, not, it's not three separate items. Um, but it's nice just to be able to roll out, have some fun with it. And of course, you're counting, you're learning, um, you're hopping. So there's lots of, lots of skills that you're learning um, when you're playing hopscotch. Um, we've put together some fabrics for you as well. This is the Christmas bundle. So you've got enough in here to make the top of the panel. Um, but of course, you don't have to use these for the panel if you just love the fabrics. So we have eight fat quarters. And these are they. So we've got traditional poncettias and um, cones. And then we've got um, snowmen and candy things. And in the blue, we have Christmas jumper fabric and candy cones polar animals, we've got hearts, and then there's half a metre of the grey spot and of the off-white as well. So all of that for £23.99. Why, why do we call it a start price? Because it's not going to end. <laughs> right. So, yes, don't, don't think you're watching an auction channel. 
<laughs> this is the price and it stays that way. Um, okay, so let's try and keep it neat. I shan't open all the others up because Rachel won't have time to demo by the time I've done all of that. Um, so that's the Christmas bundle. We also have a Brights bundle for you too. And we have the purples and mauves and blue and green and chartreuse and gold and scarlet and pink and pink spot so um fat quarter each of those eight and then half a meter pink spot half a meter of the cream and all of those again are 11 pounds and 99 pence amanda needs another cuppa i'd like to get through one to be honest at least lisa's naked she's just about to get dressed um Morning, Jean. <laughs> no pictures, please. No, not 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 this early in the well, not ever really. Um, <laughs> Alan, we haven't we haven't lost your horse picture. <laughs> um, Hannah hasn't had time to go through the pictures you've been sending in as yet, so don't worry about that. Um, anyway, I'm not going to let this coffee go cold, so I'm going to let Rachel do some talking. <laughs> Good morning. Nice to see you back again. Are <laughs> yes. you okay? Very pleased to be back. First time in the new studio. It is. It's lovely. It's impressive, isn't it? We've got a green room, a well, makeup room. You haven't noticed room. at the back, we've got the, the, the sauna and the swimming pool. There's a gym around oh. there. Yeah, I've got like, um, a, a gym car. Yeah, is there any I've got parties? Yeah, yeah. Gin and tonic oh, parties. Oh, definitely. After every show, when we come off air at 12 o'clock. Gin and tonic parties starting by, any, early. by any chance. <laughs> This is only water. This Champagne only and water. Cam canapé after the show. Yeah. <laughs> that's just what, that's what we do. So it really, really is lovely. Yeah, it's really it's refreshing, nice, it? actually. Yeah. So um, it's nice to be working in a really nice new building. Yeah. So um, I'm going to be showing people how to be doing this hopscotch, which is actually quite easy in itself. But it's been challenging for me as a dressmaker because... Being a dressmaker, I don't normally quilt. You don't really have come across quilted wedding dresses. Well, I haven't anyway. <laughs> so it's quite nice for me to be challenged as well. So, so I do you can enjoy teach you the experience. As a, oh, yeah. yes. Really? Do you know, I really do. I mean, my husband says to me, Rachel, what, what, why do you put yourself through this? And it's because I actually love sewing. You know what that's like, Debbie, oh, yeah. as well, don't you? And all of our viewers as well, you like sewing as well. So... Um, yes, and so anything that I'm given, really, I'm. First of all, I think, shall I run now? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when you when you look through the instructions, it's not difficult. It's just the same, really, as making a dress. It's just a different thing. You know, so you, you can pass on your skills. You found the book informative. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah, because it's when you're starting off, and I've heard you say this before as well, Debbie is just follow the instructions to the latter especially yeah. if you're learning because if you start going off on a tangent and you start thinking oh maybe i can do it a different way yeah you'll probably run into trouble so i the, prefer to stick to it and the, the um, projects are they look they look quite simple yeah. but as you said if you're used to one genre of sewing and you've yeah. never made a toy before yeah um it can be a learning curve it can so. It can, but you can transfer your skills as yeah. well, um, you know, so, and especially with this one, it's just really joining pieces together. Um, and as you rightly say, right at the, right at the bottom, oh, that's just caught and just going down to the cellar, people. <laughs> um, at right at the end, you've got some ribbons, which I've made out of the scraps of the fabric that was left. So when you roll it up, it's um, really quite nice and tidy and you can just put it in your play cupboard. Gary's got one at home, play <laughs> cupboard. He hasn't really. <laughs> um, I would just like to say to everybody, just before I start, um, as you know, Gary is now home from his hospital and I've just been overwhelmed by the viewers' comments to me, private messages, um, you know, asking how Gary is and he is incredible. He's an amazing man. He's watching. Okay, so hi, Gary. Okay, so he's watching out the back. Um, but he's amazing and he's going to be walking um, a lot steadier by Christmas. Okay. He can walk, which is amazing, with a stick, but he's very, very good. Okay. So, shall we start yeah, by putting the to scotch together? Um, so, first of all, we need 
obviously eight uh, eight squares because we've got eight numbers on the hopscotch. So we need eight squares of twelve and a half inch square. Right. If that makes sense. And in, in my little head, that's half of a fat quarter. So you've got quite a bit of fabric left over. Maybe make a minute. I hadn't version. even thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> and there was I measuring away. <laughs> yeah, it is really, isn't yeah. it? But this is this is the size that I always Oh look, I've got it on the look. <laughs> See look to remind me and it was covered up that way. So it's twelve and a half inch square, so obviously you make eight of those. And these are lovely fabrics, so they're sort of quilt weight fabrics as well, very easy to use. With this particular pattern as well, you just have to be a bit careful because there is actually a one way up with this pattern right. on the fabric. So first thing to do um, is to lay out your, fab your fabric. I don't know if that's too far away for the camera to see. But where the hopscotch goes... Do you remember when you used to hopscotch? One leg and then... <laughs> I used to love it. Um, so you just didn't, lay them out. Didn't you throw throw a pebble? And yes. And then you had to avoid the square. Th I can't remember how to play it. Um, I can. All I can remember. Oh, yes. Because if you had more than one person doing it, and they because we used to have chains. <laughs> I don't mean thick chains, just sort of like little odd bits of chain because they were more accurate. It was oh. cheating in a way. Um, but the pebbles don't, um, you know, don't they sort of roll yeah. further than what you want them to. But you used to have to miss that square that your yes, chain fell on. that's right. So um, I used to like playing that game. <laughs> so you just lay the fabrics out basically as it is on the hopscotch. So just sort your, your colours out. As, as you want them. So um, if you can see the first block, this is what the, the, the terms that quilters use are blocked. Okay, you're such an expert. We're just going to make our first block. <laughs> Didn't think you'd be saying that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, the one and the two are on top of each other. Okay, so our first block is going to be putting two fabrics together face down as you can see these these things are really easy so you just need a straight stitch once you've got the wadding on the back it's really important actually that you use a walking foot I've just got one as an example so you can see it as a dressmaker I don't really use a walking foot so these feet are quite scary for me and I thought what what does this bit do <laughs> where do I put that but it, but you will see in your machine instructions with these Elner machines, they actually come as standard with the machine, I believe. Yeah, with that one. Um, with mine, um, I do have an Elner which has it come with it, but on other makes of machines, they may not have them with it, which is Elner's quite exclusive in that really. Um, and but it is really worth it if you're going to do a lot of quilting. Um, because it stops it from rucking under the back, so yeah. it, it just smooths along the fabric. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sew along here with a quarter of an inch as well. Right. Because that's what quilters do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a quilter, Adrian. Yeah. And, um, and also, if you're quilting, another little tip that I found out was that you use a bigger stitch because the smaller stitch you use, it does tend to ruck up at the back, especially when you've got your wadding in between. And these little tips are quite handy, especially, I'm a beginner quilter, so I can pass on these tips to you, as I've found as I've gone along. So we just go along to the edge there. Here's my reverse one. This is a lovely machine, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> really quiet. Maura wants a demonstration on how to play hopscotch, please. I haven't oh. got my sports bra on, Maura, so you're not oh. going to get that this morning. <laughs> Definitely sports bra. <laughs> unless That's a whole different channel. <laughs> unless, of course, you liked some of them here and you were naked earlier. <laughs> not oh, naked hopscotch. Oh. Gone, gone, gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How awful. Um, right, so I'm just going to get the ironing mat 
place that on there because it's, as in all quilt projects, even though it's just a hopscotch game, you still want the finish to be good. So we've got the little iron. So just iron the seam open. And it, it does make a difference once you start putting the wadding and the backing material on. Now you're not going to put the numbers on at this stage, are you? No, no, you have to quilt it first. Right. Okay. According to the book, so I'm just going by the book. So that's your first two, so that will be your one and your two. All right. So the first block is finished off by some strips that you that you cut out from the plain fabric. Right. So because this is a long strip there, you've you cut two at twelve and a half inches by six and a half inches width. So let's get these on. Phyllis loves your top. Such, such oh, a, it's a, dress, a dress, isn't it? It's a dress. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Robin dress because, <laughs> because we're doing a sort of like Christmas presents. I thought, I know, I thought I'm going to wear a Robin dress. Yes, <laughs> so I don't jump any higher than that. I don't think I could. <laughs> No spolts bra or anything. No, I'm sorry, it's a Sunday. <laughs> right, set. We're going to put these strips on either side, face, face up. Like that, okay. So I'm going to stitch those along now. And again, just ordinary straight straight stitch quarter of an inch there we go so basic it's very very easy project yeah um, my little grandson's going to come to us for the day um, when he's on school holiday and um, where Gary's had to rest his right arm that was affected um, Alfie and, and I made a little black elephant, <laughs> which, um, which the physiotherapist found in the toy box. Um, so he uses it as his armrest. And he said, I know, Nana, he said, we'll make another one, he said, for Christmas as a secret, even though <laughs> Gary was there listening. So we're going to make something else. And I've just seen that little teddy bear in that book. Mm -hmm. How old is your grandson? Five. <laughs> He's so funny. Um, Pauline's yeah. watching with her grandson today. Hi, Pauline. Um, she says, morning, ladies. Morning. Um, me and my three-month-old grandson oh. are watching today. He's not sewing, um, is he? The, the three-month-old grandson. Yeah. <laughs> no, not sewing. <laughs> not no, not sewing no. today. <laughs> not yet. No. What are they up to on the screen? Oh, they're talking, they're talking to us. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right, so that's the one of the one side. My grandson's due in about three weeks. <gasps> you, I've got a grand uh, grandson coming on the nineteenth of November. Have you? Is Mine's that about six, the same time as yours? Six minus, I know. Oh wow, it's sixth <laughs> of November. Yeah. Oh wow. I know. Next time we see each other, we we can talk granny speak, <laughs> can't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got the two girls. I've got two granddaughters already, so it's the first oh. boy. So that's oh, that's nice. nice. Yeah. All the frilly knickers will start coming out then, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> My daughter used to hate it after having two sons. I used to say to old Jenny, but you used to look so nice in those little frilly sock, little matching socks <laughs> and little hair bands of going to school. Yes, Mum. <laughs> and she goes out of her way not to wear frilly things now. Oh. Yeah. I traumatise my daughter, I think. <laughs> right, so that's one side. So you can see where that's coming up, where the one and the two is. Yeah. There. So I'm just going to put the other side in. We put that the other side. That's it. It's a fun way to learn how to count this, though, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for a child as well. Yeah. And it's, it's so much more long-lasting than the chalk on the pavement that we used to do when oh I was younger. Yes. 
I tell you what we used to play, me and my sister. Um, we used to just play in elastic, but I think it was French skipping. And you'd have two dining chairs with a piece of elastic yes. going around them. Yes. And then you'd do all this jumping in and out and that's on and right, stuff. That's it. And then Did the next one I'd have to copy and do something else they as well. Used to call, they used to call the different moves by different things, didn't they? Wasn't there a scissor one? Yeah. That used to twist it round your legs somehow. Oh, Don't yes. try this at home, ladies. And, and then you'd and then you used to go... And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then somehow... Bring your legs out of the out of the scissors. And I'll tell you what else we used to have as well, which is so dangerous. Um, like a, a loop that goes round your ankle with a ball on the end, oh, not, yes. not a ball and chain. Yes. And you'd have to spin it around yes. and hop over it at the same time. Yep, you did. <laughs> what did you used to play with when you were younger? <laughs> yeah, coming coming messages in. There must be loads, mustn't there? That oh, um, what's the time, Mr. Wolf? Don't know that one. Don't you? No. Oh, I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> it was really exciting. <laughs> I, I used, to, used to chuck a couple of balls up the outhouse wall. Yeah. I'd spend hours doing that. That was that was that was really boring. But don't you think that we used to choose our own little games in those days as well, yeah. didn't we? we? Used to amuse ourselves. Well, it might have been. Um, what else have we got in here? There's noughts and crosses. Four in yeah. a row. I don't know what four in a row is. It looks a bit like bridge. Uh, no, it's not actually. Um, four in a row is when you, um, each person has a go. So you might have the red buttons. Yeah. I might have the yellow buttons. And then we plot them in. And then it's the next person's go. And then if you build up a column, it all depends on how far you get, but if you build up a column of four of your own colours, then you've won. Oh. A little bit like Ludo, but Ludo. a vertical one. Um, match the numbers. So lots of things to, to kind of learn. There's your hopscotch look. A memory game. And then noughts and crosses. There's lots yep. of games in here. I used to like noughts and crosses, did oh, you? Oh, Julie used to play jacks. Do you oh, remember those? Oh, yes. And you'd have them on the back of your hand and then you'd chuck them up and That's right. try and, and catch you them. You and catch the ball and then you go... Yes! Like that, yeah. Oh, I'd forgotten all about jacks. And snobs. Snobs? Snobs. <laughs> snobs. Oh. <laughs> and they were like little... I thought, should we go there, <laughs> Debbie, or not? <laughs> they were like little cubes. He did the same kind of thing as Jack's, but they were like little tiny bricks that you oh, played as. Oh, I don't know that. Jack. Yeah. Gosh. So you learn on this program. You learn an awful lot, don't you? I know. I know we do. Um, Pauline used to love playing elastic. We do, we, do, we do this every Sunday morning. We go back in time, I know. thirty or forty or fifty years. French skipping in the playground. A Connect Four for Janice. I uh, yeah. I, I remember um, Connect Connect Four. It's like that. Um, game you were just saying Is yeah did that was it called connect four in the in the book was that connect four or was it rows of four i can't remember what they called it four in a row four in a row that's very similar though isn't it yeah right so there we have our first block which is as, you, as i say it's really really simple then on the back of it we have to put um some wadding now, I haven't got any wadding, so I don't know if there's any that I can... Yep, yeah, absolutely fine. There you go. Oh, the that's, flying that's wadding. That's an iron-on one, but you don't have to iron it on. Well, it's funny you say that. I think it's a good idea to have some iron-on yeah. one. Yeah, Check it out. but I don't know what... Um, because it just makes it a bit firmer when you're... Let's just cut it up there. So your H640 is a metre square, so you probably need two. And you'll have, you'll have a little bit left over. The pattern does say two. Does it? To do the whole thing. Obviously, I'm only doing a little portion of this yeah. this morning. Because obviously you wouldn't chopping. cut it off. Um, Louise used to throw two balls against a wall um, and used an empty shoe polished tin filled with clay as a weight for hopscotch. Um, she played hula hoop, skipping, and skates with four wheels. Had some skates with four wheels yes. attached to shoes. Happy yeah. days. Um, Janice remembers what times Mr. Wolf. Sue says, so sad all those playground games are banned now on health and safety grounds. Crazy. Yes. How, how did we survive? I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they, they banned conkers a few years ago, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, clackers. Clackers. 
Crackers were oh, dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were. They, weren't. they were like two balls of a piece of string That's and you did that with them and then just bruised your knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, think, I, I, I love um, um, spell check because I, th I think Julie was saying she loves playing elastic, but she's actually put, I love playing electric. Oh, <laughs> now that's a dangerous game. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to iron this on a minute. Okay, I'll just show you the bundles if that's all right while you're just yeah, doing absolutely. that. Absolutely, you go ahead, Debbie. So there's a, we've got two bundles for you. This is the one that we're using, which is actually an Alice in Glass fabric. Um, we have eight fat quarters and two half meters in the pack. And these, uh, you can imagine these with the numbers on in white, can't you? They're really going to stand out. This is going to be so bright and so much fun. Um, but of course, it's a fabric bundle. So if you just love the fabrics, then you've got a great offer here and you don't even have to play hopscotch. Um, so we've got the purples and the mauves and the blues and the greens and the chartreuse and the gold and the scarlet and pink and then pink spot half a metre and you've got the cream half a metre as well. And those are £27.99. And if you're buying those, you've spent more than £20, which is what's stated in the obvious, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but that means you get £5 credited to your account. Hey. Yes. Um, oh, that's going to be on the 1st of November, by the way. It won't go in there immediately. It will go on there on my sister's birthday. Um, and then this is the Christmas selection that we've put together. This is your favourite one out of the two so far. Um, so we've got some trad and mod, as they say, um, and again, lots of bright colours, which I, I, lo I love that jumper one, it was so much fun. Candy cones, hearts, and then half a metre of the spots and half a metre of um, that. Um, the Christmas fat quarters are available on their own as well, so that's £23.99. If you just wanted to go for these, those are £17.99 for the complete bundle, okay, but I, th I think they're, they're going to sell out. Um, Teresa had two tin cans with string on and made stilts out of them, remember doing that? She must have been reading my mind, I was just thinking of stilts. Were you? I was, yeah, we used to make our own, well Dad, you, uh, Dad made us them yeah, out of stilts. wood, yeah. and little triangles that you used to put your feet on. Yeah, we had those, I had a pogo stick, Yes. more bouncing up and down, there was a lot of bouncing when we were younger. It was. The only thing with stilts is you had to get them the same level across, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you could you could find yourself sort of like <laughs> yeah. a bit like that. Uh, right. Patricia says, if I use a product to turn it into oil cloth, would you make all the squares up and then coat all coat the squares and then make up? I would make up and then coat the whole thing all in one go. So would I. Because then, um, the, if you're using eau de coat, um, it'll cover over the seams, so yeah. it'll make it w white proof. Yeah. And eau de coat will go in the washing machine as well if you wanted it to, yeah. so yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Might does need a couple of pots of that. Does eau de coat make it sticky as well? No. No, so, no. Um, I'm just learning. It'll, if you give it one, one coat, it has a little bit of a sheen. I, th I think it's three coats you need to make it completely waterproof, and then right. it's like oil cloth. Which is really it's handy not, it's not because sticky. obviously when you play hopscotch, you might, you're going to make it dirty over yes. time, aren't you? So yeah. just to wipe it over. Very good idea, that. So we've got the wadding on the back of our first block. Is it better if I hold it up like that? Um, so this is the backing fabric, which we are then going to add to it on the back. So I'm just making a little sample of it today. Do you know, I, if I was making this as a gift, I'd use that as backing fabric. Yeah. Um, if not, I'd use an old sheet or something and save that for something so else. Would, so would I, Debbie. Yeah. yeah, so would I. It seems a shame, doesn't it, just yeah. to get trodden on on the floor. <laughs> right. So I'm just going to cut this up just so that we've got... Joan had a bright orange space hopper. Oh, yeah, with a funny face on. Do you know, I <laughs> never had a space hopper. They were, I, I think I was a bit before that. <laughs> um, but when my eldest lad was at school, they had a, a space hopper race in sports day. That's right. And I, I, I still laugh about it now because yeah. all he did was go higher and higher and higher, but not forward. So oh, we yeah. had all these kids bouncing along and David was just going... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Jumping frogs. Alan's still got it in the box. Jumping um, frogs. Oh, is that when you when you press them down and then they hop over the oh, page? Oh, yes, remember those. Was that what it was? Uh, Jackie remembers being in a school break. They'd love making a human chain and run around with a chain. <laughs> um, I was last in a long chain and went flying across the playground. <laughs> Uh, when Wendy played camels at school. I don't know what a camel is. Well, I know obviously I don't know what a camel um, is. Oh, I what? know. What's playing camels? Well, one of you bends down like that yeah. on all fours, and the other one sits on your back. Oh, that sounds like a great game. <laughs> <laughs> well, she fractured a leg, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised, especially if it's you've got, camels, a, yeah. you know, if somebody's sort of quite lightweight underneath, and then somebody's a little bit tubby on the top. That's not a very good idea, is it? You've been to be a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lar just larger <laughs> on the top. Katie used to play with Tressie. I've, I've never had so a Tressie. Did you, do no. you know, did you know what she did? Her hair grew, didn't Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I had Tressie Envy. My friend had one. <laughs> and my um. sister, um, Rose, she's still got her original Cindy. Really? You know, Cindy came with a stripy top and blue jeans, I don't and she came with, with dark with dark ha brown hair, short hair. This is the original Cindy, and she still got her. Oh. <laughs> and I had Patch because I had freckles growing up, so they thought I looked like Patch. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, you're just making a small portion. I'm of just this, making remember. a small portion now, just to show you quickly. Actually, I'll move that along there. And then ha how I did it was I actually um, zigzagged along the edges just to keep it in place a little bit better. Okay. Um, that's how it worked for me um, before I quilted it. Um, and also down these seams, I stitched down there as well. And right. it all holds it in place a little bit better. Um, it may not be conformative, but obviously I was... Um, Are you stitching in the ditch, Rachel? Yes. Of course I was stitching in the ditch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew that all the way along. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it, it is stitching in the ditch. I only normally stitch in the ditch if I'm making trousers. This is where the skills cross over and you yeah. know where you do the waistband and you stitch in the ditch, don't yeah. you, to sort of hide the waistband. It is a good project, actually, if you are a, a, a beginner quilter. It, it um, is. Because there's no points to match from all the pieces. No. Uh, for a start, so you, and, and you know, does it really matter if your stitches go a little bit wobbly? It's a no, I mean some. I'll, I'll be honest. Some of my stitches along here, they are a little bit wobbly along there, yeah. but it doesn't really matter. The fact is that I had to go. Yeah. Um, Leslie's asking about the Odie coat. Um, you apply it if you've got an old credit card. Or something like that, um, then you can apply it that way. It's quite, it's like a gel, so it is quite runny, so I shan't pour it out. But if you just take a scoop of it and spread it, and then you can see, um, it looks wet. It's, it will be wet when you put when you first put it on, so you can see where it's been. So just try and put it evenly over the surface. Um, so that there's no clumps there, and then leave it to dry. I think it's a couple of hours. I think off the top of my head. Um, Allow to dry for 20 minutes, that's it, before spreading one or two more coats. So you can put up to three coats on there. Three coats will make it really waterproof. But then I would leave it a couple of hours to actually dry. Um, so one coat, your fabric is quite matte and it'll be wipeable. Um, but by the time you put two or three coats on there, and you can keep building that up if you need to, it will be waterproof and you can wash it as well. Um, obviously, if you sew through it, then you're going to make holes in it so it won't be waterproof if that's... If that that's the case but it'll, it will be wiped clean still so I've just sewn down just to show you just down the just down the middle just down here and then across there okay just to hold it in place so then how you qu you can quilt it really how you like on the actual pattern um, in the book it's got it quilted 
going across all the way down. Right. Um, what I did, I, I just found it um, just a bit different, really. I quilted it so I was doing a down stitch all the way around the outside, and then in the middle bits, I stitched it across. Okay. Just to make it look a bit different. So I'm just going to quilt it along here. And I just, they do say one and a half centimetres, I think. Um, but what I did, I just used the side of the foot. Yeah. And then just as a guide, and then you can go down the next one. Okay. There's nothing wrong with having wonky stitches. You, you could just do wavy no. lines all over well, you it could, or yeah. lines at angles yeah. if you don't want to be accurate with it. I that. mean, if you do, um, what's it called where you have like the free hand? Free motion. Well, that's yeah. it, free motion. Yeah. So you could do that. And if you really wanted a posh one with this fabric, it almost looks as though it should be coloured in. Yes. You know what I mean? nice so idea. you could outline some of those if you want yeah. to, or put the initials of the person. Yes, that'd be a nice idea. Maybe you know, around the outside. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I'm and and I always think with with the quilting, what I found was you need to hold it really, really tight under the machine. Um, Janice says, does anyone remember Queenie Queenie who's got the ball? No. Um, How did you play that? Never heard of Queenie Queenie who's got the ball. No. I find it quite interesting because different parts of the country have different, um, have different games, don't yeah. they? Yeah. So, oh. British Bulldog we used to play. I can't, I can remember the, the name. I can, I've no idea what it was though. Would you know, we used to have, down in Bournemouth, there was a chap that used to dress up as the British Bulldog. Really? Yeah. When I was, and he used to do a lot of tra uh, charity work. Oh. And he used to, um, he used to like um, Bournemouth football team. So he used to go along to their big games. And if it was televised or it was, it was photographed, you always saw this man in a Union Jack jacket, <laughs> top hat with a Union Jack around it. He was quite colourful. Ken, I think his name was. Um, we've only got about five minutes left, Rachel. This is going really quickly. I'm and this he remembers Queenie. I Queenie. just want to just show, if I just do a couple. There we go. Just to give you an idea. So... Jill, eau de coat isn't actually, isn't, mm, it's quite matte. If you just put one, one or two coats on it, it's actually quite matte. So I don't, I don't think it's going to be too slippy. So I think you can get the general idea. Ooh. Almost like the Italian flag, isn't it? It is actually. That was quite by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's, you can just see the quilting. Just in those two lines. So what the effect of it when you when you finish is actually is really nice. Yeah. So the next part of it um, is your numbers. And where did I put my numbers? Um, oh, here they are. <laughs> oh, right it was funny then. when I was cutting out these numbers, I I I um I lost one of my numbers and Gary was just sitting just just like you do in the lounge. And he <laughs> says, Rachel, there's a number eight over there. <laughs> so we're going to do number one and two. So like Debbie said in the book, the numbers are all full size. Yeah, Sometimes like in these books you see, um, you know, photocopy at 200% and, and it's, a, it's a bit of a faff sometimes. Yeah. But with this, it's very, very simple. And if you are having younger um, children, trying to sew them um you know they it's, it's a lot quicker and easier yeah. and i think with children they like to see a result quicker yeah so that oh there's the number two there you go oh and another good tip when you are putting your backing 
onto the numbers, make sure you put them the other way round. Oh, round, yes. <laughs> which I nearly made a mistake with. <laughs> so, because if you put them the right way round, when you turn it back, it'll be round the wrong way. So, as you can see, that is round the right way. Now, what I used on this, I just used my spray. Oh, thank you, Debbie. So I'm just going to spray this on the back. And what this does, rather than stick my fingers together, oh, that happened to me when I was having my nails done. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Karen's lovely that does my nails in the village. She's the nail lady in the village. And, um, and I put my hand in those dryer things. And if I, it was fine. And she had, like, the top couple of coats on and she ha uses fillers in my nails as well and anyway, my, my finger was like that and I've got, I couldn't get it oh she said that's never happened to me before <laughs> it was quite funny um, right so I'm just going to pin that in place because what you what you then do I would actually use a buttonhole stitch going all around there yeah that, no blanket stitch isn't it blanket called? stitch yeah it's a bit similar to buttonhole stitch but I would use a blanket stitch to go round there, okay, just to finish it off. And we should have a number one. There we go. I, th so I think we've figured out one. what Queenie Queenie is. Oh, what is it? One person turned round and threw a ball over their head and then had to guess who had it. Not the kind of game you play on your own, what, is like, it? Like that? Yeah. You just and then guess who caught it? It's a bit like throwing your wedding bouquet, isn't it? Yes. Not <laughs> knowing who you've thrown it to. <laughs> right. So that's your number one and two. That's your first <gasps> block. So, uh, sorry, I'm just reading the rhyme that goes with Queenie Queen. When, you, when, rude, when you're ready, it? Debbie. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> should, I'm, should I'm really joking. Back to the yeah. day job? Yeah. <laughs> You do get engrossed in that, though, don't I you? I know, I know. You know, Gary quite often talks to me, and he says, Rachel, <laughs> Rachel, I am talking. Oh, I'm so sorry, Gary. Sometimes it is selective hearing, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> All depends on what it is. Right, so we've done the one and two. So three and four go side by side. So again, just have a look at how your pattern on your fabric is. Instead of that pink one, that's quite similar to that red one, isn't it? So if we have a nice green one, oh, that looks like an apple, doesn't it? And black currant crumble. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think of. <laughs> so that's your three and four. Which is the right way up, but that way up. Right. Faces together. So I'm just going to sew down there. And you have shorter strips. Uh, on this one, you don't have strips either side. You just have the binding going down the side. When you come up to number five, then you have sh shorter strips to go either side, just the one square. I hope I'm making sense. such a quiet machine isn't it as well right so this will be your number three and four so just quickly iron that um, press the seam so that goes all the way across doesn't it that goes all the way across and um, because when I first first started doing this, um, I thought, oh, I'm going to have to get it right in the centre in the middle. But you don't actually because it does fit perfectly. Yeah. Um, Christine's messaged in saying, good morning. Morning, Christine. Um, sh oh, she's making Christmas cake and pudding today. Oh, yummy. <laughs> Is she quite close to us? <laughs> <laughs> Can I pop in on my way back home, Christine? I'll leave Gary in the car. 
<laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Right. So this is your this will be your three and four. So you put right sides together. Do you see what I mean? It, it if, as long as you use the same seam allowance yeah. all the way down, it should it should fit perfectly. Fabulous. Um, we've had a question about H640. Yep. Is that Anne? From Anne. Um, she says, is it okay for cushion covers? Absolutely fine for cushion covers. Um, it's, a, it's a fusible polyester fleece. It's about a quarter of an inch in thickness. Um, so it irons onto the back of your cushion cover. I'll, I use it a lot because it, it gives it um, a nice bit of stability. Um, but it makes your cushion cover feel nice and squashy as well. Um, so even if you're not quilting over it or anything like that, it just feels nice when you touch it. So yes, definitely for cushion covers. I've hidden my pin cushion. Do you ever do that at home? Yes. <laughs> um, who's that? D Donald was asking if you've turned this out or if you put binding round it for the finished one. Yeah, I would put bi binding round mm. it. Um, you may not quite have enough of the plain fabric to make the binding as well because it's right. quite a long area to, um, you know, to go around. But you can make your own binding. Um, you know, to match a, a colour scheme, for instance. Yeah. Or you can buy the ready-made bias binding, of course. And you only need straight strips for this as well, isn't it? Because you're not sewing around a curve. No, so no, it's all square it's just, yeah. and straight stitch, which makes it nice and easy. So this is then becomes your three and four. So there's one and two there. So obviously you'd put your number three and four there. So you can see it all coming together now. Yeah. Um, the four's back to front. <laughs> Of course, I knew um, that. <laughs> I, I, I knew it all. I right was just waiting for Debbie to tell me that. <laughs> yeah. um, so just to, to yeah. go backwards a little bit. Yeah. Th you, at this point, you would have quilted everything. So you sew all of the squares together first I of all. I would sew all the s squares together. And then so quilt. you've got the whole piece. And then I would quilt it. Yeah. Um, and then on the top of the quilting, you then place your numbers. Right. Okay. That's the way it tells you to. I yeah. suppose you could do it the other way around, but that's the way it tells you in the book. Yeah. Um, so that's your three and four. And then obviously on the top of that, you would then just have your one square, which is the number five. Um, and then you notice that you've got these short pieces. Um, so you will have four of those. So then if I put those together... So you can see it comes together really, really quickly. It's the quilting that takes the time. Um, Viv says, morning girls, can I ask Debbie, is it okay to join H640? I've got bits, but I need a bigger bit. Um, I wouldn't join, it depends what you're making with it. If you're quilting over the top of it, I'd just, because it irons on, I'd just iron the pieces onto the back of the fabric and there will be a, a seam there, uh, well, they butt up against each other. Um, if you're not going to, and then if you quilt it, it kind of joins it anyway. If you're not quilting it, um, then again, put the two pieces up together and I'd do a zigzag stitch just to join them together. So yes, you can do. Don't, don't waste any of your bits of H640. You can just keep using it. Um, oh, Beverly's messaged in. She's, she's got a, a message across the bottom. She says, hi, <laughs> loving having Rachel back. That sounds a bit painful, actually. <laughs> Sorry, Debbie. <laughs> it, it happens, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, she's just brought her first <laughs> Christmas gift for 2021. No. And that's next oh, year. She's, she's going to New Zealand. Ah, that's why. And she's sending, oh, she's sending this year's parcel tomorrow, but she started making for next Christmas. I was going to say, does it take a year to get to New Zealand? <laughs> Maybe it does. She's walking. Oh, that, and no wonder. <laughs> Put it in your little back backpack. So this is number five block. Well, 
yeah. number five goes on, I should say. Like that, you see? Yeah. But that will fit perfectly, so you don't really need to worry yeah. too much about um, about centering it because the fabric will, because you've used your quarter of an inch seam, it will automatically join up perfectly. Do you know, we're, we're just about out of time, Rachel. Oh, um, we're going to be, I say we, Rachel's are going to be doing a little bit of um, bag making. It's the one on the shelf behind her that you might have noticed. Like It's like um, a carriage bag um, and that's at uh, 11 o'clock. And we've got a bit more bug making coming up in the next hour as well, so do stay with us. Um, we'll see you again at 11. OK, thank you very much. And let's give you a, a reminder of what we got. So everything, um, well, the hopscotch game is in, is in the book. There are 50 projects in here, all using back quarters. So small pieces of fabric, which I think is brilliant. Um, great for beginners, great for children if you're teaching them how to sew, um, and great for using up small pieces of fabric from your collection. We're not having stashes anymore, we're having collections. Um, but these are all very different. We've got lots of characters in here, which is nice. But then there are games, and I, I do like an educational tool myself. Um, so anything with counting or colours, or I think the memory game is quite nice as well, matching the numbers. I think there's quite a few things here that you could use for, um, for older people as well. It doesn't have to be just for kids, if you like fiddle blankets and things to keep the mind occupied and that kind of thing. Um, shoot for the stars that's another game and then all of these characters I, I love them Look, we've got an alien dinosaurs mermaid I think we've got toys for everybody not, not necessarily toys collectibles I'm going to call these yeah um, so I'm, I'm answering words in my ear I don't normally do that yes they are a bit fancy Hannah <laughs> And talking to Hannah like everyone at home can hear. Um, we've got little soldiers, there's Miss Kitty, Gingerbread Man, Little Red Riding Hood. So again, 50 projects. It's nice and bright and fun and clear with lots of instructions. And those are all of your full-size templates at the back. So just trace those off and then you don't have to cut them out of your book at all. We have the Christmas bundle of fabric, which has been your favourite. So there's eight fat quarters and two half meters of fabric for 23 pounds 99 so this has been your favorite and there are the traditionals and snowmen aren't they bright fun i mean this could be a tradition for you couldn't it every christmas out comes the hopscotch there's granddad <laughs> But nice, oh, make a soft ball as well. If you make one of those balls out of, is it pentagons that, will, if you sew them all together, can make a ball shape. Um, so you're not chipping your skirting board as you're chucking pebbles around the room. Um, I think that would be a nice idea as well. You could make a matching one. So that's all £23.99. And then the Ellison Glass fabric, which... Rachel was demoing with. Don't the colours go really well? And I love how you know they're just bright and they're fun. We've included white as well as half a meter here, so the uh, the squares and the numbers will really stand out. And again, that's just twenty seven pounds and ninety nine pence for the whole lot. Um, this isn't with the book, so you don't have to make the hopscotch. Um, game with this if you just love those fabrics you've got a great deal for everything that you see there there's a meter in total between all of those for your 27 pounds and 99 pence um, Susan says it's nice to see a, a demo by someone who's new to a particular type of sewing oh, yeah, I like that as well because they they pick up on things like you said that other people are going to pick up on when they first start um, they pick up on things that someone has been doing it for years takes for granted absolutely and loving the playground reminiscences we played balls against a wall in French skipping a lot and skipping with a long rope I never did that, that you know the, the really long rope where you could have three or four of you all skipping at the same time never got on with that one um, what stops numbers from fraying? Dawn. Um, if you're going to just apply the numbers with your um, 
your five, uh, five of five spray. Um, you can do a satin stitch around the edge, which is very close together, zigzag stitch. That will help stop from fraying. Um, if you use a blanket stitch or a looser stitch, it will fray, uh, only as far as the stitches, so it won't, it won't look too tatty. Um, the way to stop the numbers from fraying would be to use bond web or heat and bond, and that's the iron-on um, fusible um, adhesive. So it's an iron-on sheet. We don't actually have any in stock at the moment, um, but you iron that onto the back of your fabric, scratch the paper off the back, and then re-iron the numbers onto your work and that's permanent that will stop it fraying and you don't even have to sew around them if you don't want to with those so hope that's helped um, okay we're going to see um, have a little bit more bag making and books in the next hours so I've actually got to finish the coffee then so I better not have another one um, so we'll see you again in a couple of minutes Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, my name is Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday, simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. 
If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hello there and welcome back again. You're still watching Sewing Street and we're still here live and sewing. And at the moment, we've still got a few of, um, of one of the early birds left. Um, so I wanted to give you a reminder because these have been so popular this morning. We had, oh, we've had so many people ordering all at the same time. We've got names on the screen and everything this morning. It's quite entertaining on our brand new website. Um, the price of this is amazing at £5.99. These panels um, are the same size as the flower of the month, which we sell at um, 9 99 So I think you've got a great deal there. Um, but it is your early bird, so you have a reduced price price for the duration um, the the other option the pump the pump the pumpkin <laughs> I don't know where that came from the pumpkin is uh, just about to sell out um, but we do have a few of the cats left this is the spooked cat spooky cat panel um, the panel itself or the square itself with the cat is 12 inches square and then you have these uh, two and a half inch strips as well so cushion covers and bags a lot of you have been buying these as gifts as well i can't remember your name of but somebody bought uh, the panel for her daughter whose birthday was on the 31st of october um, and of course they're the same size as the flower of the month so you could i don't know if i would but you could stick a cat in there if you're making a quilt <laughs> Um, and again, it's only £5.99, and pence, exclusive to Sewing Street and all printed in the UK, which is, which is rather nice. So no, don't go looking for these anywhere else. You're not going to find them. They're all <laughs> old hours. <laughs> um, right. I want to show you some canvas. Oh, I love canvas fabrics. Um, when I first saw the canvas fabrics, I thought, canvas, you paint on that, it's going to be really stiff. Uh, and it isn't, it's a soft canvas, it's a quality canvas, and but it is nice and strong. So, black in the background, um, and these beautiful flowers that look like watercolours. This is the kind of fabric that is going to be perfect for making a bag because it's really strong. Um, you could make something like a tote bag out of this or a soft bag without any interfacing because it's really tough. If you're dressmaking, then a jacket I think would be perfect. You could make a pencil skirt with it. It's not a soft and drapey fabric like a viscose. So a viscose? Viscose. So it's something a little bit more um, structured than you would be able to use this for dressmaking. For homewares, this would be perfect as well and it's 140 centimeters wide so you've got a dressmaking width so you could easily make two cushion cover fronts out of this one um, and maybe just a black on the back black cotton would be fine and then you're making the most of your fabric because you don't see the back of cushion covers very often do you um, oh we're really busy for this one it's really busy for this one already. Now, your £5.99 is for half a metre. That's what you're going to get for £5.99. So, easily a couple of cushion covers. If you wanted more, so maybe a curtain making, this is perfect for curtains. Um, if you ordered more than one, they do come joined up. So, if you need a metre, then order two units and it'll come in one piece. If you need 10 metres, then order 20 units and, oh no, that won't come in one piece, will it? That might come in one piece. <laughs> might come in two lots of 10. Depends how big the rolls are. Um, but on the colours lovely on this one it's just really bold and bright and gorgeous and those flowers really stand out on the black background don't they really, really pop at you but it's nice strong good quality canvas fabric so this is the black background we do have other colours i do like grey um, I just think grey is a very classy, upmarket kind of colour, a bit posh. And so having the grey in the background with those same colour fabrics gives a more soft kind of feel. And this could be summer or winter or all the, the bits in between, couldn't it, really? So all year round, I'm thinking blinds, um, Roman blinds in canvas, I think would look lovely. You maybe need a couple of these if you've got maybe a, another small window, 54 inches square. You could probably get, get away with a metre of that. Um, and again, five, oh, matching window seat cushions. 
I said, look, nice. I need to make some cushions for my new studio. But I've got I've got electrics in the studio now. I haven't got I haven't got internet yet, so I'm not quite in there. But I can start decorating. Anyhow, then we've got the white back. Ah, oh, this is nice as well. You see, they get nice together actually. So that's I shan't open it all. That's the, the white um, background. It is 100% cotton. Um, and again, that really nice strong canvas. It's not see-through. It's just really, it's it's got a drape, you know. So if you are making curtains or blinds, you're going to have a really nice fold to it. Um, but it is a strong fabric. So again, for bags, that's absolutely perfect. And again, that's five pounds ninety-nine. This uh, you would be able to cover a stool with this one. It's strong enough that when you're stretching this over any kind of upholstery and you you bashing your staples in there or your tacks or however you're doing it it is a really good strong fabric you could put some interfacing on the back of it if you want to strengthen it even more but if this was a stool or uh, maybe your dining chairs you know the, the chairs where the seat pops out and you can just recover them and stick it back in again that would make a nice fresh dining room set wouldn't it and again they look like watercolors the the, the print is just beautiful lots of colors in there as well but i like all of the, the different kind of shading and that that certainly looks like watercolour doesn't it it's beautiful um so again five pounds 99 is for half a meter there i might make a bag out of that put that to one side um, we do have a tropical option this one is very limited stock though so we have um, pineapples and are they hibiscus um, and then palm leaves as well. Five ninety nine is the price for that one. That is, it is the canvas, but it's a bit softer. So you could make a shirt out of that. Actually, that would <gasps> maybe maybe an apron. Again, five ninety nine, half a meter. Buy the half meter, so you can um, make make larger items with those if you wanted to. We have some solid colours for you too. Oops. So that's your red. I'm just looking. If you're going to mix and match, then red would go very well, wouldn't it, with any of these, actually? Oh, the black. Look at that. These are the they're canvas again, but they're only £3.99 for half a metre for those. Um, so there's the red. This one is teal. Do you know, that goes well with the black as well because there is a little bit of teal in the black so it, it kind of picks up on those colours. <laughs> and again, £3.99 is your price for half a metre. Then we have the grey. Charcoal we're calling this one. Yeah, you could. Greys don't clash, do they? So you could go for a, for a darker one to go with that one. And then finally, we have the cream. This one's got the little flecks of seeds in it. So um, th this isn't an Osnaberg, it is the canvas, but it's got um, these little tiny flecks in it, not the red bits, I don't know where they came from. They dropped out my eyes. Um, they're from the uh, cotton pods. So it gives a really nice, rustic, natural, organic kind of look to the fabric, I'm thinking there. Right, yeah, so that's those. What should we do next? Should we have a look at some books? I'm going to make a bag from a tote bag book. Um, so this is one of the Builder Bag range. I've got four books um, from the Builder Bag range, and they, they're a little bit different. I'll show you just really quickly because they're all working pretty much the same way. Inside here, the book actually comes out, so this is a folder, and you have um, templates in here. There's two templates in this one. So there's no patterns to draw around, there's no patterns to trace off, there's no pinning involved, there's no paper involved. You simply draw around the, the plastic pattern and, um, and then cut out the shape. And there are 15 different styles of tote bags. I'll show you those just really quickly. Um, I've got a page of all of them. I haven't. Um, but using different techniques as well. So there's some with piping on this and that are quilted. Um, some with pockets, some with flaps. For each one of the bags, I'll show you 
those are all of the techniques, look, piping and binding and all that kind of malarkey. Um, but he has highlighted the areas of the templates that you're going to use. So this is obviously the flap that goes here and we've got a zip pocket on the inside and that the whole of the template is the shape of the outside of the bag. And they're, they're, they're not huge bags, to be honest, because I'm limited to the size of the templates that, that I've used, um, but they're very useful bags. You've got a round flap, different shapes of flaps. Um, I'll show you how to embellish, how to make handles and straps for them, how to fit different types of zips. There's, there's zips that go in the top of the bag and you can use those techniques in other bag making projects that you have. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, that's a fold away bag, so that's one of those handy bags to keep in your handbag. And then just things that are a little bit, little bit different, a little bit quirky. That's a double pocket bag. Um, so it's like two pockets joined together and you don't see the join on the inside, which I think is quite clever, if I say so myself. So that's tote bags. 11 99 hold the line. They're normally £15.99. I don't tell the author about that one. Um, so that's, that's totes. Alan has been making bags. Oh, Alan, that's not What lovely fabric is that? Oh, that's a horse fabric. That is gorgeous. Oh, well done. Thank you for sending that in. Yeah, very, very neat work, that. Um, this is satchels. Um, now, these are a little bit different. The, the tote bags and the occasion bags, the first ones I brought to you, have two templates in here. I'll open those up later because I'm going to make one. Um, the satchels and the backpacks have one template. This was quite a challenge, to be honest, because, let me just open this up and show you. I wanted bigger templates so that you can make bigger bags. So the biggest satchel is actually about this big. It's, it's really big. Um, so instead of having the two templates in the book, you've got one bigger template in the book. And the challenge was when we're having these manufactured, actually making a template out of some kind of material that wouldn't crack when it was folded. Um, and also to have it transparent so you can see through and fussy cut. And in fact, the first ones that came through, it's quite funny, they were completely transparent so you couldn't see them. It, it was like putting a piece of glass over, over fabric, you just couldn't see it at all. So there's a little bit of frosting on here so that you can actually see the template. Um, and again, every one of those different types of satchels are explained um, as to which part of the pattern that you're going to use. Um, so mainly satchel styles, different sizes. Some aren't quite like a satchel, but you can still use the, t the, the templates to make those different styles of bags. And if you wanted to add extra pockets or zip pockets on the inside, you've got all of the instructions inside here as well to be able to do that. So hints and tips and advice on different types of fastenings and closures and locks. That's the zip pocket you can put on the outside or the inside of the bag. And then all of the tools and everything that you're going to need and how to use those templates. So that's satchels. Uh, £12.99 and this is a £17.99 book. Yes, at least it wasn't £11.99. <laughs> and then there's uh, backpacks. Backpacks have one template again, but the template will even give you little nose in the mouth if you wanted to make a bear or a panda or something out of them. Um, and different styles of backpacks. That's an adjustable one or a convertible one, so it turns into a tote bag. Um, that's just got a zip across the top. We've got flaps, we've got drawstrings, we've got zip panels in the top, we've got bags that are a little bit of fun. And the techniques, again, you've got piping and zip insertion. And um, I love that one, that's my favorite one. The teddy bear on tartan. Um, yep, there's another drawstring one. So again, you can take elements of these and use them for different projects as well. And they're really simple to use. There's, uh, as you can see, there's lots and lots of pictures. That's the benefit of being married to a photographer. Um, so as, as many photographs as we can possibly fit in there. And of course, all of your um, tools and techniques and everything is explained at the beginning. And then we've got the Bag Boutique by Debbie von Grabler crozier and oh, we've got a full size pattern in the back as well. And these are the bags. She makes some lovely bags, does Debbie. Lots of details. That's huge, look. 
And again, you've got lots of different techniques in here too. I've just designed a bag called a Hanna bag actually, but it's, it's Hanna spelt H-A-N-A -A because that's Japanese for flower. And it's a floral fabric, so there you go. Um, Lysel. Oh, and again, I, I like all of these different techniques. We've even got beading on there. Look, so there's um, there's lots to learn from Debbie's books. Um, that's fourteen pounds ninety nine, and that should be fourteen pounds now. How could my books get reduced and Debbie von Grabler Crozier's don't get reduced? Um, oh, that black floral printed fabric, half the stock sold out. I'm having such a busy day, I love having a busy day. It's nice having you all there. Um, half the stock sold out, so if you wanted to order that, don't, go on, just, just go and order it. Um, as, as much as you like at the moment. But um, again, we are, we're selling out of that very, very quickly. Um, what are you going to make with it? Is it curtains? Is it cushion covers? Are you bag making? You can make yourself a waistcoat. Gilet. Okay. Um, should we make something? Oh, that's coming up in the next hour as well. Mm. Mm. I'm going to use this white fabric. And I'm going to make a little tote bag because that's about all we've got time for. Um, I will need some lining as well. So let's have a look here. Can I use that red fabric, do you think, the canvas for the lining? Um, right. While I'm just opening this, I'm probably making rather a lot of noise. Uh, for being a centre picture in. Oh, that's from the book, isn't it? She made it for a daughter. Who loves, oh, that's amazing fabric, isn't it? Oh, wow. So, yeah, that, that's, uh, thank you for that really appreciate you sending the pictures in so it's nice to see what you do um what should we let's do a really simple one there is a um a tote bag called the simple tote and i think it's the first one if i remember so simple tote dead easy um because all i'm doing is sewing right around the edge of the um of the templates um, so template one, let's go right back to basics. Which one are they calling one? That's template one. And we're not using template two at all. So we can put that to one side. And I'm going to turn my fabric to the wrong side. I might use a little bit of H640 on the back of this as well. <laughs> I, I don't know how well H640 is selling, but we're using an awful lot of it, so we might be out of stock. Um, so template one, you need to use the whole tote outline um, from template one. Each one should be placed on the fold of the fabric. Okay, well I can put this on fold of fabric because I haven't got any fleece on here. No, I won't. I'll show you what to do. Because when you think about it, if you're... Um, if you're folding fabric in half and you've got wadding on the back, then it's going to be quite thick and you're not going to get an accurate cut because you've, you've got the fold there. So what you would do in that instance, if I have a, this is a friction pen. So it doesn't matter which one's place on fold, but it does say place on fold for tote there. And then if you have any, oh, that was a bit wasteful. Um, Oh, 404 spray or 202 spray, then you can spray that to the template and it makes it a little bit sticky on the back and it stops it from slipping. Or grippy spray, grippy spray would work as well if you've got that. So I'm just going to mark where the centre is. That's your 404 spray, that's £7.99. And then I'm going to flip it over and draw the second half here. Just give that a quick spray. There we go. That's not an, now not going to slip. Um, so let's draw around the edge. It doesn't go anywhere, by the way, 404 spray. Not like 505, which will disappear eventually. Um, it won't mess up the fabric. It's only stuck to the template. Um, 
if, it, if the template starts getting a little bit mucky, then you can use something like a wipe spirit to take it off again and then respray. But that's going to stay tacky. And if you put enough on it, you can even stick it to the walls. Um, right. Let's cut this out. So really, I'm, I'm just, I'm just cutting, cutting rectangles. This is the most basic um, project in the book. So if you're brand new to sewing, then this would probably be the one to start with. Oh, there we go. Looking for rulers, and I'm surrounded by them. Is that one left-handed? Because that's a little bit odd. We'll have a go. No, we won't. Thank you. I can read my mind. I didn't even ask. Do you want the Ulfa? Yeah, I want the Ulfa. I like the Ulfa. Um, should have turned the mat round, really. Let's line this up. There are obviously more complicated um, bags in there as well. And there is a section on how to fit zips into the top of them. This one I'm not going to. It doesn't even have a flap on it. It's so simple. Um, and how to make the handles as well. Um, just cut there. And you might have noticed there's a hole in the pattern as, uh, on the template as well. That's to put zips in. Um, so you literally draw through the centre of there, cut down the middle of it, and that's the perfect size zip hole for whatever bag that you're making. Right. Um, if you wanted the tote bag book, by the way, at, at a reduced price, I don't know why, you go take advantage of it. Um, it's just about to sell out. Right, <laughs> starting to look a little bit like home here. Let's move that. Let's move that. Yeah, we need a bigger studio, you know. There's no room in this one at all. Um, right, you can draw around your templates again, but to be honest at this stage, I'm just going to use the fabric that I've just cut as a template to recut two more pieces for the lining. And then we'll have some H640 on the back of it. I love that sound of the blade crunching through fabric. Listen to that. And there we go. And I think we'll have the handles out of the red as well. I think that would look rather stylish. So that's those two pieces. And then there's my template for the handles, straps, and uh, so template one, and place on fold. So on here, it says place on fold for the handle, and it is that wide, it should be four inches wide. And I'll need to cut two of those for this one. So let's see if we can do those all in one go. So there's my fold, and then, oh, I've got a red pen on red, that's not going to work, is it? Um, I've got a black one. So that's on the fold there, and then we just draw through the gap. That's quite clear instructions as to how you're going to cut. And just cut around here. Um, that black floral fabric sold out now, by the way. Crunch. Um, we do have the other colours left at the moment. We've got the grey and we've got the, the white. That's the white that I'm using here. Well, this is red, but you know, that, that's the white I'm using here. <laughs> I 
think uh, I was a bit ambitious with cutting through all those layers. Okay, that's that. That's those. Don't need you. Don't need you. So, page 640. <laughs> Sewing Street sponsored by H640. <laughs> Let's pop that on here. There. Oops, take that off. Right, and we'll give that an iron. Like so. Now hold the iron over there, and if you've got steam, then steam, H640 loves steam. Um, so give it a blast, but otherwise you might just have to hold the iron over the fabric a little bit longer just to make sure that the heat penetrates. Um, not easy to iron from the back, but if you're using something like a PU or faux leathers, then you can do that. But if you're ironing from the, um, the H640 side, just put the iron up and down like that. So don't spend much time with the heat on there. I just do this. And then I can iron it right up to the edge because obviously this has got uh, glue spots on it. So we don't want um, we don't want that getting on the iron. Are you still with us? Debbie's with us. Oh, she's she's saying good morning to Eileen. <laughs> Lisa's just spelt some um, smelt. Just spent some money, a birthday money on my book. Oh, thank you. Oh, Sandra, the sprays two hundred two and four hundred four. Um, do you know, if you have a look on Odif's website, they have so many different sprays and there is a chart that tells you what all of the sprays are for because they do a 202, a 404, 505, there's a 606, there's the grippy sprays, there's loads of different sprays. So we've only got the 404 and the 505 at the moment. Um, 202 I would use on paper patterns. But again, I've, I've, we haven't got any. Have a look on ODIF's website. O-D-I-F. Right, let's do this. So just on the outer pieces, I normally give those. Do those. Alan says, can you sell what you make from the books? Absolutely, you can. I would positively encourage you to sell anything from my books. Um, anybody else's patterns or books, you may have to get in touch with the publishers and ask um, permission to sell anything. But I'm giving you permission right now so you can do what you like with them. Credit would be nice. But, you know, I'm not too fussed. I just think if you can make, even if you make back the money that you've spent on the book and your fabric, you're more likely to come and buy another book, aren't you? So, so the method in my madness, you go make some money out of me and you can come back and spend some more. Hey! <laughs> okay, that's it with that. Um, I'm just going to, while I've got the iron on, iron these straps as well. Um, so, to the centre <laughs> and crease. It does look nice though, doesn't it? That, like, that, that floral fabric particularly, I think, looks lovely. And it's nice and fresh and, and bright and uh, almost summery, I'm thinking, with that one. Yeah, I'm missing summer. You know, getting up at three o'clock in the morning to come to work here and it's sunny is brilliant. <laughs> so I'm just so folding the long sides to the middle and then over again. This is an open-ended strap because it's going to go into a seam. 
I'll just show you quickly if, I'm, if I was going to make a closed end strap. So if my, this is going to go into the seam on the top of the bag like so. So it doesn't matter that the raw edges are here. But if I'm going to put a strap that goes over the bag so I see the ends of them. And now what you're going to do is to fold in the same way but then turn it completely open so you've got the raw edges here on the outside and then sew across the end and then you turn that back out so you get a really nice neat seam on the end and then sew down the sides. But that's, that's explained in the book. Right, just do the same with this one where I've got loads of time. So that to the centre. And to the centre again. Like so. And then fold in half again. Right, then I'm done with the iron. I'll turn it off. Um, right, and then sew down the edges of here. I've got, I've got white thread, but I think white, white thread might work, make the stitch a bit longer. Um, given a choice of white or brown, I think I'll stick with the white. And just sew right down the edges. But I think having the white stripe down the side will pick up on the white of the bag, so I think that's going to work really well. We do have some of these machines in stock, by the way. I think it's the, <laughs> I think it's the only one we've got. It's the 550. 50 stitches, computerised sewing machine with a speed control, so you don't need to use a foot pedal. And in fact, do you want to have a look? Well, I'm just sewing straight lines. It's not the most interesting thing to watch, is it? Um, we've got a new website if you weren't aware. It's sewingstreet.com. So it's the same address as the previous website, but it's all new. We're not sharing it anymore. So you can still watch live as you did previously. Um, if you click on the video, it'll show you all of the products that we have for you in the show. So that makes it easy, easy to shop for things that you're seeing. But of course, in fact, that's everything that we've got in the show lot. So there's lots of things that you haven't even seen. Um, and the sewing machines, you'll, you'll need to search for that. Or so you can go into the sewing machine category. So it just makes it easier, I think, to see what's actually on the show, what we're demonstrating right now. But then you can search or you can go into the sewing machine category and look for 550 and then you'll see the machine there and you may not if you haven't visited us for a while you may have not have known that we're doing split payments so if you're spending over 149 pounds you can actually split the cost of anything over that price one unit of something over that price into three payments which i think is fab and if you're spending over 799 pounds um so that's high-end sewing machines isn't it but you can split those payments over five months so five payments Oh, Kimberly's messaged in. Hello. And she sent a picture of a bag that she made. Oh, that was from my occasions book. Oh, that's lovely fabric. Oh, and oh, um, I love that fabric. Um, morning, Debbie and everyone at Sewing Street. This is the first bag I made from my occasion bag book. Uh, easy to make and she really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Thanks for sending that in. Good taste in fabric, that I have to say. Right. Let us, yeah, and good tasting back, and good tasting books, of course. Yes. Right, so I'm just making sure these are the same distance from each side and that the strap's not twisted. So we'll have a pin in here and a pin in there. That looks a little bit too far apart. Let's do that. I could follow my own measurements if I wanted to. And I can make sure that those are the same, which they're not quite. So, one, two, three, four inches from the side. 
and for us better just make sure that's not twisted and then we'll do the same with the opposite side and I can match the handles here without measuring against each other so again facing downwards and oh so I'm just trying to find a pin um, there again just make sure it's not twisted and then I'm just going to sew those two pieces just within the seam allowance to secure the handles there and that one out you come those back there yeah, that pin the pin dish is magnetic and not, not just chucking pins on the floor let's <laughs> make sure that's straight right so you come out here and then we'll sew the lining to the bag just across the top, so handles facing downwards on the inside and just sew straight across the top here. I tend to use, um, I say I'll use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but I tend to use the edge of the foot as my seam allowance, which is a tad over, I would say. But it doesn't really matter as long as your seam allowances are uniform, so they don't have to be perfect. And then we'll do the same with the opposite side here. <clears throat> so again, trapping the handles in between the two. You can make those handles longer if you wanted to make a, a shoulder strap. Um, that's the longest that they'll go from the templates, just making that square. I remember you, you have got a lot of techniques in here as well. Some of the um, bags, well, there's patchwork, there's a bit of quilting in them. There's adding piping, there's adding zips, there's adding pockets, outside pockets, patch pockets, pa pockets with flaps on. Um, but basically, I'll give you all of the ingredients to do that. Oh, don't you hate it with it. Who uh, messaged in on Facebook earlier on saying, has your bobbin thread run out yet? Yep, it ran out now. Um, oh, thanks, Kat, for filling that one up. Need one of those fancy machines that tells you when you're running out of thread. Right. Mm, there we go. Right. And then these two go right sides together. And we're going to sew all the way around, but leave a gap in the bottom so I can turn it the right side out. Um, Excuse me, I'm going to start at the side seams because I want that seam to meet. So that's just going to make sure that they do. I find that easier. And I'm not pinning around this bit. If you choose to pin, that is your prerogative. I find it just as easy sewing straight lines like this to just, just go for it. Just line up the raw edges together as you're sewing. You might find that when you're sewing on the top of the uh, fusible fleece um, that you may need to lengthen the stitches a little bit because there is a little bit of friction there. Let's move those handles out of the way. Um, and it can slow the machine down a bit so it looks like your stitch length is shorter. And of course, thicker fabrics like this, if you have a walking foot, that may help just to feed through the fabrics evenly at the top at the same time as the bottom. But don't rush out and buy a walking foot if you don't have one already, because they can be quite expensive. So needle down in the corner. <laughs> oh, we've got names coming up on the screen again. That's You're all buying H640, we've done it again. 
<laughs> yes, it's um, 8.640 day today. There we go, look, so this is the, the speed increase on thinner fabric. Turn around, don't forget to leave your gap. So that will be there, whoops, oh no, wrong, wrong button, that's it. So leave a gap of about four inches and then carry on. Don't forget if you spend over £20 today, we're going to give you a credit for £5 into your account. Um, that's because we're celebrating our new website. We don't need excuses to give money away, really. Um, but we're celebrating the new website all this weekend. But that is one per customer. So if you've already ordered, you'll have your £5. You can recoup that on the 1st of November. Um, but it is one per customer, so if you come back and spend another £20, you know, you're not getting another one. You've already had one. Oh, stop it. So now I'm going to chop off the corners. Let me neaten up a, a bit down here. And then make a mess with these little fiddly bits. So just cutting off the corners to make the points a little bit more pointy. Um, then we'll turn the whole thing the right side out. Now I did square the base of this bag. So it's not just a plain old two-dimensional bag. And I'll show you how I did that in just a second. So, oh, we've got names again. I think we have to have about 7,000 people ordering at the same time. And then your names start popping up. Let's poke the corners out here. Might be 8,000, actually. There we go. Then I have an owl, so I'll need to close over my owl. So now I would change thread if I was doing this properly and have a red thread. If you pull the two sides of the hole away from each other, the, um, the hem folds in. And then we're just going to sew straight across there. Like so. this off and then we'll push the lining inside the bag noisy scissors aren't they like so and I want to push the corners right into the corners like that Right, and then I'm going to top stitch around the top here because I think it looks neat and it'll help to keep the lining nice and flat. And then on the sides, I'm going to pinch them and then just fold that up and then put a hand stitch in there. And on the one in the book, I sewed a button on the top of it as well. So it gives you, it makes a square base and it's just a little bit more interesting than just a flat bag. So let's sew around the top of this. I'll see if I can I'll see if I can do that on a on the machine as well rather than you sitting watching me can sew something so again I can lengthen the stitch here because it's not a seam it's just a decorative stitch so I'm going to go up to number three make sure that the handles are moved away and I'm sewing with the seam just on the top you could roll that slightly to the inside if it's a little bit easier Fold that over. So if this is the first bag you've ever made, how easy is that? I mean, right from scratch um, in less than an hour. But when you've made your first one, I think the next one you can put a zip um, panel across the top. You can maybe put a zip pocket on the inside. You could add a nice contrasting red flap. And in the book, there's two different shapes of flap that you can create, either a pointed one or a a rounded one. So we've got some more techniques coming up in the next hour with Rachel. 
is going to be shown as a bit of, bit of bag making, bit of zippage, bit of piping. There we go, that's that. Oh, sorry about that noise. And snip that off. Be tidy. I don't think I'm going to get this under the machine. Right, let's see if it works. Oh, little 550, I underestimated you. Oh, oh Karen, I'm, a, I'm afraid the pumpkin cat panel is sold out, which is why you can't find it online. It's actually gone. I wonder if we get any more of those. Keep watching the space, because it might, oh, that's a little bit wonky, never mind. Um, yeah, they are exclusive to us. We might be able to get some more in. So just, just keep looking on the website, because it's ages till Halloween, isn't it? So, is it two weeks? Oh, oh Mandy sold her first bag. Congratulations. The big bow bag, really, I love that one. Um, she says the lady loved it, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Go make some more. Go earn some money. And Suzanne says she loves this one because it's so easy. This is a very easy bag, but I think just turning the corners up like this gives it a little bit of a, a difference. So, it's very noisy. So, I have caught the lining when I've turned that up as well. So, the inside should be nice and neat. So that's kept the, bo the box shape at the bottom as well. And what I would do, I went a bit wonky there, but I'd normally do that bit by hand. And then I think a nice big red button on the corner would look really nice. And that is that. Um, Chris has asked about the lining. Uh, which red fabric was I using for the... <laughs> just, just put it on the floor. Um, I actually use the red canvas fabric, um, which is... That's all I've got left, which is this one. Um, <laughs> there's no shelf, it's just all floor down here. There you go. Um, so this, uh, th that's what I've used. A plain co red cotton would be absolutely fine, but to be honest, you'd be hard pushed to find one at this kind of price anyway. Um, that's the price you pay for, for quilting cotton, isn't it? Um, oh, we've got a message down there from um, Silvana. Sorry, I can't read that very well. Morning, Debbie. Wood canvas fabric. Uh, be suitable for a makeup bag. It'd be perfect. That would make a really nice makeup bag. Um, I've used the um, um, H640. So all these numbers, 505, the 550, the H640, the 202s, H640 behind this. So if you, you can make a makeup bag and make it really substantial by doing that, you can use it on its own. It would be a little bit more floppy um, or just put some fusible interface in. The kind of thing that you put in collars and plackets and things like that would, would give it a nice little bit of substance. I think it's quite nice with a makeup bag, even though it's a small bag, that it stands up. So if you don't put any kind of interfacing behind it, you'll have a floppy bag. If you want a floppy bag, that's fine. Even with a canvas, it's still going to be floppy. So personally, I would use H640 or some kind of interfacing on the back of it just to give it a bit of stability. That's what I would do. Um, so this is the white floral canvas that I've used. Um, we also have, so I'm just trying to tidy up a little bit because Rachel's coming in in a minute and I won't be able to find her under all this lot. We do have some of the grey left, here's the grey. That would, see that would be nice as well wouldn't it? Imagine that, oh yeah, maybe a little bit more wintry. So that's your grey. Again, at £5.99, that's half a metre, and it's 140 centimetres wide. So you've got a, got a lot of fabric there for your £5.99. Um, we also... Oh, we've got some kits for tote bags as well, actually. Which are these. Um, this is the everyday tote bag. 
from Laura It's So Different. And these are actually based on Laura's paintings. Oh, I can't open that. You have to rip it. So this is what I love. Look, the panels are all based on, um, on Laura's own drawings and paintings. So you've got a really lovely bee on the front of the bag. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. And they have um, eyelets in the top as well for the handles to go through. So you've got this kind of style of bag um, with the eyelets. That goes across the top like that. And, of course, you've got all of your instructions included in there as well with lots and lots of pictures, uh, which we love. And remember, you've spent over £20 if you order that. So you get your £5 credit. So if you're buying this as a gift for somebody, then um, you, you get yourself a little gift as well there, don't you? All right, so that's that one. That's the bumblebee. And then we also have cactus with baboons. But we've only got six of the cactus left. Look at this one. This is lovely. And the fabric it actually feels like it's been brushed. It's really soft. It's canvas again, but it's got a very, very soft finish to it. That's so pretty. Love the colours in that as well. And you've got your eyelets and you have your instructions. And you've even got in here, um, you've got your lobster claw clasp and there are some um, Chicago screws. So I shan't take those out, but those are the little screws that you put through the handle to give you a really professional finish. Personally, I'd sew them on and then put those on as decoration, but they, they just give a nice finish to your bag. Um, so again, that's your cactus. Have a look on the website for anything else that you need on sewingstreet.com. I think it's coffee time. Because you have another, should we have another coffee? Should we do that? Yeah, we're going to have another coffee, I think. Go and put the kettle up. See you again in a couple of minutes. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Rosie Weld. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. <laughs> My baby piece of kiss with the sewing is the sewing with us. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show!
Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your product isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits, feeling good, it's about looking great, making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside, and it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Did you know that if you shop with Sewing Street, you're only going to pay one lot of postage all day? That's one payment of £3.95, no matter what you're buying. And you can check out as many times as you like without having to pay another delivery charge. So shop online at www.sewingstreet.com or you can order via our call centre, which is 0800 001 4433. <laughs> My favourite piece of kit with the sewing is the sewing with her. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dress making. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dress making in school. I came to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seams stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your product isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely.
And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello again and welcome back again. Now, uh, did you go and put the kettle on? Angela did. Um, she stood in the kitchen watching the show, preparing roast dinner and mini Victoria sp uh, sponges. And she said, took your advice and stuck the kettle on, cup of tea, sneaky Victoria sponge and, and your show. What, what, what could you want on a Sunday morning? Thank you for that. Um, just really quickly, because I know we're moving on from this one. Uh, Barbara said, would it be easy to put a zip in the top of that bag after it's finished? No, you need to put the zip in as you're constructing it, but there are instructions in the book for that. Um, can you use wadding instead of fusible fleece? Yes, you can. And Alan, you're right, a bit of 505 spray will help to keep it in place. Um, Tracy says, I may have just made a mistake this morning. How do you sharpen your dressmaking scissors? Mine seem to be blunter after trying to sharpen them in a knife sharpener. It's completely ruined your day. Tracy, I think you're going to have to take them to a professional scissor sharpener. Um, if you've got a hardware store near you, they can, they can sometimes do that because it's... Um, they're a little bit different to knives. Um, try, meanwhile, cutting through some aluminium foil, some tin foil, the things that you wrap around your, your roasts. Um, that, that can help to resharpen them. Um, I hope that helps. That's everybody there, I think. Right, so we've got a new book. I don't think it, this hasn't been to air before, has it? I certainly haven't seen it. Oh, it's been on once, but it's a relatively new book. And this is a compilation of projects from Search Press's Love to Sew range. Love to Sew books are very simply explained books. And there's uh, lots of different authors that, um, that do projects for the Love to Sew range, myself included. So what uh, Search Press have done is actually compile some of your favorite, oh look, um, compile um, favorite projects from different books. That's one of mine. Um, I know no credit. I need to have a word with them about this. We don't know who these different authors are, but these are all different, um, different authors. So I mean, that's yeah, they're my hands. Everything. Um, so we've got lots of quilting techniques. I love the projects in here. I, th I think they've done a really good job of pulling all of these together. That's mine, and. Um, I love the colours in the book, the way that it looks. And again, these projects are simple projects to make and there are so many of them. And do you know, each one of these books, a Love to Sew book, will sell for £7.99. Um, this is 60 projects. So there's an awful lot more than one book's worth for just £10.99. This is amazing value. So even if maybe you've got one of the books, I think that's uh, Legom Accessories by Debbie von Grabler crozier um, even if you've got one of the books, there's so many more projects in here from different books. That's, I can't remember, um, that's mine. And I'm not just going to go through and point out all, well, I've, I've, I might just go through and point out all of mine. Only works out at 18 pence per project, but that's mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's mine. <laughs> that's a little um, a toaster cover but it's in the shape of a caravan, so it might match your sewing machine dust cover if you've got one of those. Um, but yeah, peg bags, all using small amounts of fabric as well. This is what we're going to be making, or Rachel's going to be showing you how she made in the show in just a second. Um, but we've got door stops and makeup bags. There's, that's mine. And um, lots of different techniques as well. Bread basket, table runners. <gasps> that's mine. And uh, <laughs> so I'll stop it now. I, lo I love the bolster pillow as well. That's not, that's not mine, but I wish it was. Um, little patchwork quilt, that's mine. And um, tape measure cover. And then, oh, look, a pumpkin, a stack of pumpkins, pin cushion. Oh, look, that one's mine. Uh, sunglasses case, Christmas stockings. And then you've got templates in the book, uh, in the back, which you may have to, do we enlarge these? No, we don't. But the project that we're making today, which is this one, 
doesn't actually have um, a template. It has measurements in there. So this is what Rachel's going to be showing you, the techniques on how to make up. Maybe not something for a complete beginner, but certainly something that you can have a go because there are techniques of zip insertion. There's elastic uh, on the inside. We've got the piping that goes around there, putting a handle on, quilting fabric. There's a lot of things going on there. So it could be quite a learning curve for you. Um, so the book, £10.99, worth every 18 pence a project. Authors are always poor. Now you know why. They reduce your books. Um, we have bundles for you. So this is the one that Rachel did use for this one. And in here, you've got your sewing machine. I like this look. It's like vintage sewing machines. Isn't that lovely? Now we just... Um, we're just giving you the bundle for this. It's not including books and patterns and things like that. So again, you can make something else out of this if you wanted to. Um, it looks like my collection of sewing machines. Oh, my auntie used to have a dressing table tray with a, a comb, a brush, a mirror and a clothes brush all with this kind of fake ivory carving on the top. It's quite nostalgic, this, isn't it? Um, so this comes to you with the teal cotton, half a metre, calling that jade, and you have your iron-on interfacing as well for just £12.99. Oh, and your rickrack for £12.99. We do have some other colour options, though, if that doesn't float your boat. A quarter of the stock of this one sold out already. As such a busy day. We're going to have names flying around in a minute, I'm sure. Um... I think we have to get about 13,000 people on the phones and then all of a sudden these names pop up. Um, this is the fabric that um, Rachel's... Go that might be a lie, by the way. <laughs> that Rachel's going to be using <laughs> um, for the demonstration this time. And, you know, I wouldn't have put those two colours together, but they work, don't they? So you've got your purple rickrack with this one, your interfacing and a metre of the fabric for £15.99 for this one. Um, oh, the picture, right, the picture on the website is the same colour as this, but the description says purple Michael Miller fabric, and that's what, that's what you need to be looking at. So if you click on it, it'll show you all of those fabrics. Then we have, should we do pinks? So pink roses, pink spots. And blue rip wrap. Okay. Um, don't have to put that on if you don't want to. <laughs> Just save that for another project, I think. Um, but again, a metre of the fabric between the two and your interfacing, and then you've got rip rack as well for £12.99. And, and then the final bundle that we've put together for you. Love the purple spots. And we've got the lilac with the random spots. And you've got your interfacing. And I don't know why you've got red rick rack. Um, and that's £15.99. I suppose it stands out, doesn't it? That it should be purple, shouldn't it? No, that's that one. I think that's the wine. Yeah. But that would have been... Oh, no, anyway, anyway, that's what they've done. <laughs> so that's what you're getting. Um, for £15.99 all of those and that's Michael Miller again so I, I think you've got some beautiful fabrics you're going to make a lovely bag you need some piping cord if you're going to put piping cord around there and then I'd just say you've got some spare rick rack to put in your stash you can say that on a Sunday because there's nobody in the office um, now if you want zips we've got zips on the website as well so have a look on sewingstreet.com and um, put the book up there again and remember the project is actually coming from the book so shall we go over to Rachel hello, and hello again, again. <laughs> <laughs> do you know I just remembered something about you know when you said about the dressing table yeah. sets well this is going back years and years ago our nan used to live with us they used to in those days didn't yeah. they yeah and um, so she used to have her bedroom in the front of the house. We had quite a big house. So she had this bedroom in the front of, her, uh, of our house. And, she, um, and if I was ever naughty, I used to creep in and she always used to say to me, what have you done now? <laughs> so I used to tell her what I'd done. So I used to sit in her bedroom 
combing her hair from Aww. this comb that was on her dressing table. I do just these little memories, isn't yeah. it? That you remember. Yeah. But the poor lady, she you know, she didn't complain. She'd had her hair permed. I remember this and I combed it so much the perm fell out. <laughs> So, oh, but she you must have done something very naughty to be there that long. Yeah, I always used to <laughs> creep in, you know, and then she, would, she used to spoil me and just say, here's sixpence for a Princess Tina magazine. Oh, remember those? Don't Princess, remember Princess Tina, Tina comics. No, we had Dandy. My favourite. <laughs> Until I grew up and it was Jackie then, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, I remember Jackie. I remember Jackie yeah. with the Osmonds. <laughs> Sorry, anyway, <laughs> back, to make, back to making the sewing case. Um, yes, these fabrics are absolutely fabulous to work with they really really are we're not just saying that they are um, and it's a dream to work with um, the little sample that I've made as Debbie pointed out they're not the easiest of projects so but even if you're a beginner like we've always said don't don't put it off and say oh no I can't make that you can just take your time with it yeah you know just do a little bit every day until you you know and you'll learn as you go along yeah so so don't say no i don't want to make that because it's too difficult it's a bit tricky when you get round the corners but i'll show you that in a minute you, you could always make a, a bag twirl yes you could <laughs> yes so try and make one up in scrap fabric before you commit to your yeah exactly nice before fabric. you cut into the fabric yeah, yeah by all means twirl. <laughs> it's about twirl yeah 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 <laughs> I have to remember that. <laughs> right, so how we start off, um, as in Debbie's patterns, um, quite a lot of Debbie's patterns, you, you, you measure it out with a ruler, and then you cut, if you remember back along one, one programme that I did, and we were cutting round gravy tops, and yeah. um, you know, and <laughs> sellotape lids, and all sorts of things, um, and this is very, very similar. So they give you a measurement to start off with, so because we're going to make this fabric, okay? So the fabric at the moment is plain, so we're going to make the fabric into a quilted fabric before we start. You're quilting again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Dab hand now. <laughs> <laughs> but I've learnt, you know, I really have learnt as we go along. Um, and one comment I had on the, because I have been looking whilst I've been having a cup of coffee, and one lady said it's quite nice because sometimes if you're a seasoned quilter, you forget sometimes. And, it, and I'm the same with dressmaking. You just automatically assume people know how to do things. And if you have somebody do something for the first time, you think, you know, I hadn't even thought about that mm. because I'm seeing it through a different yeah. angle. Yeah. So, um, and it's quite nice. So thank you for that comment from that lady. Yeah, I saw that. It was nice. Um, so... How we start off, we've got a little bit of Blue Peter on here as well. Remember <laughs> Blue Peter? All the oldies are coming out. Isn't that not still going? I think it is, yeah, but it's I don't recognise yeah. anybody now, no. do you? No. I, in, in my day, it was Valerie Singleton and yeah. John, what was Nokes. his name? Yeah, that's it. And Get Down Peter Shep. Peter Purvis. Yeah, Get Down Shep, wasn't it? <laughs> so it was all the oldies. Well, yeah. I'm sure they're just as good as they were in your Blue Peter badge. <laughs> I never had one because I was never any good. Anyway, um, how you cut this out is they tell you to cut out 20 by 18 inches. Now, because I'm old fashioned, I go by inches, but they do give an alternative where you can cut it out in centimetres. So centimetres, it's 50 by 45, but it's all in the book. So you, you've got your top piece of fabric, 20 by 18. You also cut a square of interfacing, medium, um, I had medium, um, medium weight. Then you've got your wadding, 20 by 18, and then the backing. Right. Okay. So as we did before, you put your interfacing on there first. Because it's a sewing case, you need it slightly firm because it's going to hold cotton reels and all sorts. But you could just as easy make one out of the other fabrics for a makeup bag or something yeah. like that to go away with or you know or even one for my husband to put his socks in <laughs> things like that <laughs> lots of different different um, ways to use it um, so I've put the interfacing on the back of the top fabric okay so I'm just going to spray this down a little bit again with the 505 spray 
this is actually my own, but I, I, as far as I'm aware, I think you can still get this on the website. Yeah, so. it won't be a can quite as big as that one, though. Oh, I've got a big one. Oh, <laughs> you've got big cans. I shouldn't have said that, really, should I? <laughs> so, anyway, you, you spray it down just to give it a little bit of, um, you know, of stiffness when you, when you sew it. And then on the back, you've got your backing fabric, okay? Now, this is the, a little bit of the tricky bit. It takes a little bit of measuring, okay? So I've done half of it here, which is half my Blue Peter, okay? So how they tell you to do it, let me see where my... Yeah, so I must have started from there, that's it. So you will see that there's two angles coming down from here. Let's put it where we should, so in the corner here. And then you'll see it coming down in a straight line down to there. Now, it's not meant to, to reach the other corner because we've got it at a 45 degree angle, which makes the quilting squares the right, the right sizes. So um, I've used a similar ruler to this. So when you edge this up, this is 45 degrees. So this will actually edge up to your corner. So you will see where the 45 degree mark is. So you bring it all the way down. You need to do that all the way down so once you've done that little line put a little dot and then just keep bringing it down dot all the way down to the end and then just simply just join the dots up okay. and then you do it the other way round to the other corner and again deliberately that's not going to reach so don't think you've made a mistake because you haven't so you do exactly the same okay now, what you need to do then is that you need to measure one and a half inches from each point of these lines going down. So one and a half each, each um, way down, okay? So you've got one and a half, three, four and a half, six, and right. so on. So you, as you can see, I've put little dots here as I've gone along and then you just join all those dots up then what you do is then you start quilting once you've got all your crisscross all the way down and I'll show you my blue Peter one in just mm -hmm. a second do you want to see some magic go on then right not on this one all right although it would work on this one to mark it out I've used one of these Frixian pens and I as and again I didn't realize the the usefulness of this with a seasoned quilter <laughs> <laughs> so all the professional tools so with this with this other piece that I've already done earlier that's what they say on Blue Peter isn't it <laughs> yeah. it's one I've done earlier so you can see on here that we've actually quilted it it looks really quite nice I don't know if the that's it if they can come in a little bit closer yeah so you can see where the quilting has taken place all right. I always quilt from the back. The number of years I've been doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Hours more like. Um, so I've always quilted from the back because if you if um, you know if you run out of thread or something, at least you can pull it uh, out from the back. Plus also, I wouldn't like to use a pen yeah. on the front of a fabric just in case. Yeah. Although these are quite good. So you will see from here my grid of the quilting and you will also see the pen in underneath all the stitching right do you want to see the magic go on then. and don't do it before because otherwise you'll lose your lines <laughs> which is what <laughs> i did a little learning curve i thought oh i just iron it nice and nice and flat before i sew it of course all my marks came off didn't it oh. so i had to go back and put all the marks back on so don't make that mistake quilt it first did then, is the iron on? Um, I might have switched it off. Sorry. Oh. No, that's all right. <laughs> that's okay, Debbie. <laughs> um, but once this heats, because this heats up quite quickly anyway, might be hot enough for us just to show it. So if you, if I choose a little bit of the red ink that you can see through, and I'm going to put my iron on there. So now you see it. There you go. <laughs> See? Should I do it some more? See, look. 
Now you see it? Now you don't. Oh, I tell you what, I've just forgotten. Oh. Oh. <laughs> So you had a bit of padding underneath that. Yeah, worry about that's it. what I should have because these are brand new tables. Um, so here you see it. Now you don't. Look how clever that is. So it's all gone. So after you've quilted, obviously just iron it through. Nobody would know that you've actually done that grid. So that's it without the ink on. Fabulous. So we've, we've got... We've got friction pens on the website, I think. We should have different colours as well. Yeah, they've got different colours. I think they bundle them, don't they? I think they do, <laughs> Debbie. Yeah, no, I think they do. Although, I, no, actually, I think I bought this one singularly. Did you? So, but I'm not saying it's not on like that on the website. So once you've got your fabric, let's do away with this. We're now going to cut out our shapes for the bag. So you can see with the bag, you've through the middle, you've got the zip going through the middle. Yeah. Okay. So from that side to that side. That's right. Okay. So what I would do, because there's you've got plenty of fabric here to cut out your bag. So to cut out these pieces, the top piece is. 17 and a half inches long and four and a half inches this way. So you have got markings on the pattern and there's very good reasons for the markings on the pattern. Plus as in dressmaking, you've got little notches and they are actually really important, Okay. which I will show you in just a second. So just pin it on. And you'll see that where the notches are, it's at the halfway points. Right. But also, I would also make a little nick in there because you need to cut this away to put the zip down the middle. All right. But all will be... So as you can see, you have got plenty of fabric here to deal with. And when you draw out your oblong, you actually curve the corners with a mug. Actually, my mug was perfectly, th I think it was three and a half inches, or oh, three and a quarter inches in di diameter. And the mug that we've got at home was exactly three and a quarter diameter. <laughs> so, so I didn't have to use a gravy top or anything. I would just say, that's the amount of fabric you need. Yeah. That's the amount of fabric you get. Yeah, S exactly. You could make two. Yeah, exactly. So I, well, I suppose... Well, you could even try sort of maybe, you know, I was going to say, if you, you might even be able to get three, but I don't think quite. But um, but no, you could get two. And what, what value for money is that? And there may be a matching coin purse as well. I'm sure there's other projects in the yeah. book that you can make with your Or a little leftovers. scissor keeper. Yeah, that'd be a nice idea. Or a little pin cushion. Yeah. You could put inside so it all matches. See, I'm clever, isn't I? <laughs> right. So now we're going to cut it out. As she cut in, Viv's got a problem. Ah. She says every time she uses interfacing, it comes away as I sew. Do you iron it on with a steam or do you iron it with a dry iron? Because I tell you why, I know some seamstresses and sewers say, no, you can actually use the steam. Now I find it exactly as you've just said, if I use the steam, for some reason the glue comes unstuck oh. and it will come away from the fabric. So I, my personal thing is, is that I wouldn't use steam. Okay. Because, yes, I, I, I agree with that lady. We're friends now, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to cut round the corners. Right, there we go. So it's such a quick... These cutting out of very quick make, it's the actual putting together that's a little bit more tricky. Yeah. Is you'll, you'll never know if you can make it unless you have a go. Exactly. And, and I'm all, you know, when people say, oh, you know, I can't do that, you can. If you spend the time to do it. Yeah. It's just confidence. 
And, um, and I think with this one, um, like you said, I think I would definitely probably make a toile actually, yeah. thinking about it so that you know how it all fits together. And then once you've done one, um, it doesn't seem quite so daunting the next time. So you see that we've got a little notch there. I've just made a little pencil point and a notch the other. That's the halfway points, okay? So that's where you, you will need those to actually match it up when you start putting the case together. So I'm just going to mark it there with the scissors. Right, also I would actually mark, or you can use your, um, your, your pen, I'm just going to make a snip. That's it. So that's the top half made. And I'm just going to mark it where I want to cut it for the zip. So you just follow it where you've made the top. You'll see where the halfway point is a bit lower down. But this is where you want to put the zip. That's it. Just to let you know, the fabric that the sample that um, Rachel made was made of is just about to sell out. Oh, I'm and not surprised. There's lots of you on the phones now for um, for the fabric that Rachel's using. Um, although the picture is wrong on the website, the description it's not it's not wrong. It's just the same. It's the same Im image. Um, but it's got a dot on it apparently saying Michael Miller Purple. So if you wanted to go for this bundle, you need Michael Miller Purple. You will have the purple fabric and the yellow fabric half meter of each and your interfacing as well. And you have purple. Was it purple with that one? How odd, because it matches. Um, you've got the purple Rick Rack with that one as well for your £13.99. FYI. And I've had a question from Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Um, with the 25, uh, if you spend 20 pounds, you get five pounds credit, but she says, does it automatically get credited to your account? As I do not see a code, um, it will get automatically credited to your account on the 1st of November. So you won't see anything straight away. It'll appear there. When's the 1st of November? A couple of weeks away, isn't it? Um, yes. Yeah, so that, that'll be credited on the 1st of November. So you might not see anything straight away. So don't worry about it. You'll get it. Right, what I'm doing here, I'm now putting the rick rack whilst I've got the fabric nice and straight. Because you can imagine you it's, it'll be virtually impossible once you've actually attached yeah. it to the <laughs> to the case. So and what I do is I, I use um, the positioning of the squares on the quilting for the rick rack and then you know you've got it straight. Okay. Ooh. Hi Susan, she loves your top. It's a dress. It's Christmas, a dress. Christmas dress. Let's see if I can <laughs> stand back a bit. I won't pull it, pull it up because you won't want to see that. <laughs> right. Woo! See? <laughs> Did you make it? No, I didn't actually. It was. Um, it's sort of like a vintage manufacturer. Oh. JB. Oh no, I don't know. They're not called JB. That, but I'm not. I don't think I'm allowed to say it on <laughs> on air. First one word starts with J and the other one is B, just in case. Right, so I'm just going to sew this rick rack on. Now the, the you have to be slightly careful where the rick rack goes round in sort of like that shape. Try and get your needle to go right the way through the middle. Right. Because obviously you, you can't it would be impossible to try and go round each one each yeah. one like that. You'd be there forever, wouldn't you? So just go right the way through the middle. I'm just going to increase that stitch. Um, Sally wants to know what the project is called. This is from um, the Love to Sew book. It's a comp compilation book. Um, so normally in a Love to Sew book, you might get 20 projects. Here you've got 60, um, but it's not three times the price. And the project is called the Floral Sewing Box. 
Um, so no pattern for this one. It's, um, it's giving you measurements, so you don't have to trace anything off or anything like that. And uh, it's just a really pretty little, pretty little bag. So that's it, and that's the book it's come from. So you've got the rip there. I was just going to just measure it here, look, Debbie, because we were saying you could make two out of this. Oh. So if I just put that across there, so yes, you can. You could. And lovely. use the same rick rack and everything. Yeah. So that's good value. So I'm just going to snip that off there. And that's a, that looks really pretty as a little finish anyway. Yeah. And you're s on the one, the sample that I made, it's I made it in a cream. Right, so now we have two halves um, of the case. Obviously, this, this is obviously the bottom half. And this is the top half. Um, and this is why it's important to have your, your notches um, now. Um, so um, what I would do is transfer. Did I touch? I'm not doing as I'm. That's it. So I've forgotten my top notches. So that's the top notch. And it's important actually when you put in a zip so that you get so you've got them the the same because otherwise it'll end up like that because yeah. you'll have one one longer zip if that makes sense. So so to put the zip in, here we have the zip, and it doesn't matter if it's too long. So what how I normally do it is I imagine this zip and then this is how I want it to look, you see what I mean, folded round, so I know that that will go on the bottom piece there. Right. So we just stitch up there. And there'll become a point where you need to keep your zip open because you will, um, because you will need to obviously turn the whole thing inside out. So if you, you've done up your zip, <laughs> you're knackered really. <laughs> Right, so Tanya wants right. to know if you can sell items made from the book. Um, Tanya, you'll need to get in touch with Search Press, so um, it should say somewhere in here the T's and C's and everything. Um, so contact Search Press, the contact details are in there, and Search Press will then get in touch with the author or the designer of the particular project that you're asking about, and they decide whether or not you can actually sell your projects. Um, normally, and it's the same with a lot of dressmaking patterns as well, they're, they're just for home use, you can't normally sell them. But um, just double check with the with the authors. If it's one of my projects, do what you like with it. Um, but but you won't know whether it's mine or not because they haven't got anybody's names in there. So yeah, check with the publishers. Always check with the publishers. Now for this project, as we did before, we have the walking foot for the quilting. Okay, so you need that that plus um, you will also need another foot, which is the zipper foot. Right. So I'll just put there so you can see. So you always recognise it because it's got like a little paddle on the front. So I'm just going to change that round. And the reason we need um, the zipper foot, because we need to try and get nice and close to the zip. So we can't do that with an ordinary foot because you'd end up with the foot going down the middle of where the coil of the zip is. Yeah. So we need to get nice and close. Um, Carol would like to know if you made the pincushion. No, I didn't. I had it from a company called something S, something Street. Oh, I wonder. I wonder yeah, what that I'll, could I'm be. not quite sure. Oh, look. <laughs> Twins. Look. So I'm if assuming because it's there, we've still got some on the website. I th I'm yeah, not put, put sure. Put pincushion on the website and have a look. But as soon as I saw, mm. I thought I must have that one. <laughs> I'm a bit worried about putting them on the same shelf in case there's some mini pin cushions by the time I, I leave. <laughs> you never know. These things happen. Yeah, they? these things happen. So, so what I would do, not how I've done now, I would actually put the pins in that way round so you can see where you're stitching. Just put those in there. There, now we're ready to stitch. 
ready to rock and roll. Right, so you will see um, on the zipper foot, you've got two little notches either side, so you can actually position your needle as close as you like to the zip, which is why you need the zipper foot, because you can't do that with another... Um, I'm just going to check to see what stitch we need. Here we go. Um, There we go. So that's come over to the le to the left hand side of the of the zipper foot. So I would put the zipper foot, the other edge to the to the edge of the zip. Right. Okay. So we get it nice and close. I like to sew with zips that are too long as well. I like to keep the stopper and the pulling everything out, out of the way while I'm sewing it. So I'll always yeah. buy a, a too long zip and then it's, yeah, chop it and down. It's a better way because when you get down to the end, you end up having to pull it further yeah. down just so that you, yeah. exactly as you've just said. Some people may prefer to put a little bit of tape in as well. If you're a bit nervous about putting the zip in, just put a little bit of sticky tape in underneath just to hold it before you sew it. Okay. Very similarly to, the, to how you, you might want to do it if you were making a dress and you've yeah. got the zip going down the back. Nobody likes the wonky zip. There we go. So that's one side of the zip. You can see when that is turned out, you see a really neat edge. Okay. So I'm going to stitch down. Um, once I've actually got the zips in place, I'm going to be putting like a little top stitch along there just to hold it back. So trying to match it, match the ends up like that. Denise says, um, morning ladies, love, love how Rachel says it as it is. She says, I'm exactly <laughs> the same and it gets me into trouble sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you get to an age where you, you don't mind saying it as it is and suffer the consequences. No, and I think when you get old, you can get away with a bit more. <laughs> you know, people say, oh, bless, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> Whereas when you're young, you... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, bless, she didn't mean that, did she? Did. <laughs> right. So at this stage, we don't need to be opening the zip at this stage because we're only putting, we're only just stitching it into the, into the bag. So just make sure you move that zip away. So here we go, down the other side. Well, this morning's going ever so quickly, isn't it? I know, it? I don't know where it's gone. We've got, we've got about 20 minutes left. Oh, right, OK. So what I'll do is I'm going to get this zip in and then I'm also going to show you how to do piping, which is another big thing of this. Um, of this project. Okay. Uh, you'll need to get yourself some piping cord though. W what size do you use? I use four millimetres. Four millimetres, so it's quite a thin one. And usually, in your, uh, you know, you, you can buy it on a roll or I don't know how Sewing Street um, buy theirs in. We haven't got any. Just buy it by the metre or okay. whatever. We've got some coming apparently. But ah, right, we brilliant. Haven't got it um, you could, I suppose, leave the piping off it, couldn't you? If you do get a little bit nervous about that for the first time. What's that for? Leave the piping off. Yeah, you could. You don't, ha you don't have to put the piping yeah. cord in. Um, you could just, you could, um, you could actually get some ready-made bias binding and just fold it in half. Yeah. And stitch it down that way. So you don't need to make it complicated. It's just that I, th I always think if you're going to make a nice project, you might as well. Yeah make the most of it. Yeah. 
because because there's nothing nicer than people say, "Oh, where did you get that?" Yeah, where did you did buy you? it from? I know I made it. it. So there he is. That's your zip in. So that's a really nice, neat job. Okay. So like I say, I would actually stitch that down. I don't know if I've got time just to do that or just to cut this out. Let me yeah, just cut move. this piece out. We can always out. get back again, can't let's, we? Yeah, let's move on. And you could, if you want to, because we're cutting strips off of this fabric, you could actually, because um, the handles, you, you're told to um, have an eight inch length. So you could actually make it out of something. Yeah you know, to make the most of it, whichever you prefer, really. I always cut it square first. I don't know about you, Debbie. And then yeah. I just deal with the curves as... There we go. Nearly done. So just cut round the curves. There's so many... Well, there's 60, there's so many projects, you've got 60 of them. But such a wide variety of projects in this book as well. But I think, I think it's very clever that the way that they've put this together, because as you flick through, you would think that was all one author, because the images are all that, that kind of yep. bright and lovely quality. So I'm making my snips here, which is your halfway points, which you will need when you come to put the... Um, case together. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Have I done that one there? Yep. Done that one there? Yep. So this needs to be 14 and a half inches by 8 inches. And this is where the tricky bit comes in. Now, I'm just going to do a little bit round the front of the piping just to show you because this way round, this is going to be the bottom of the case and that's going to come round the top as the top of the case and then this zit is going to literally fit round there. Right. Okay. That's where the tricky bit comes in. Okay. So what we do, we're just going to put the piping in the middle of that. And then what you do is you just put the pin in and just shove the piping in as close to the middle as you can. Like that. So it's not as daunting as it seems. I, I love piping. Um, so do I. Whether it's on a bag flap or yep. I, I don't know, around a collar or on yep. a cushion cover. Yep. It just gives a really... It's almost like outlining something, isn't it? If, yeah. you, if you imagine that little bag without the piping would look very plain, yeah. wouldn't it? Um, but it, it really finishes it off. It gives it not just a professional finish, but it, it, it makes the most of the other fabric, if that makes sense. And, and it, it's, it works best, I always think, if you have a contrast colour and it makes it pop out. Okay, I think so. There we go. So there's your pins in. So you can see where the, where the cord is actually fitted in there. So again, use your zipper foot and just stitch close to the edge there. All right, so when you put your presser foot down, you'll be able to see where the cord is. Right. We've got some new graphics. Oh, yeah, uh, stuff appearing on your screen. What do we <laughs> like? So that little that little box that popped up um, <laughs> was the details of your um, of the fabric bundle that Rachel's using at the moment. We're gonna have cartoons and everything one day. We'll have little people <laughs> running across the bottom of the yeah. screen. <laughs> right. This is just to give you a little idea of how the piping fits into place. That little box, look. <laughs> I, I know it's only a little what box, it but it's, in the little box? It's, it's, it's the details of the fabric oh. bundle. 
I haven't got my glasses on. I know it's a bit little, but it's it's there. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So we can do that now. Oh, with our new website and our new studio and at et al. Right, so there's our piping. So that wasn't that too difficult. So you shouldn't feel daunted at all in making your piping. Okay, so then how you fit this round, if you put the piping there, this is actually how you want it to, to look round the outside now. Um, trying to think of the right way round it's the right side facing right isn't side it? facing yeah is that right no you'd I'd, I'd trim it back a bit to be honest Rachel because you've got yeah. a really deep bit there so I'd, I'd let's trim just that, have a yeah I'd trim that back to your seam allowance and then the raw edge around the raw edge that's it Debbie See, this just proves, you see, that you've just got to think a little bit. It doesn't mean that I've made a mistake. It just, you've no. just got to think about what you're doing, really. So I'm just going to go round to the front here just to show you. Ah, oh, yes, of course, that's right. So, so just pin that into place. Obviously, you'll have a longer bit. Yes, home. you would, because you'd have go it all going the way all, all, the <laughs> way, all the way round. So we're just going to pin that quickly there. Just be a bit careful when you come round the corners. Um, just bend it round. Linda's asking about the size of your piping cord again. Four millimetres. Four mil. Yeah. If I show you a piece that I've cut off. Um, where did I cut my piece off? There we go. So it's That's mine. Quite fine then. Yeah. Um, oh, just while you're pinning that, Anne is asking about the pink bundle. She wants, say, a reminder. Um, so we have Juliet Roses and we've got the pink pin spot and the um, interfacing. And bl I don't know why. And some blue rickrack. It did stand out very nicely against the pink, um, I think. But that, that's what you're getting. And that's twelve pounds and ninety nine pence. We will recap all of the different bundles at the end of the show, but that's that's that one. Oh, because Beverly's been walking the dog. Is the weather all right? Mine won't go out in the rain. <laughs> and Hannah producer's been looking after a neighbour's dog. And <laughs> it's it ran home. <laughs> I think it was over cuddled personally. Oh, <laughs> What, with Hannah, you mean? Yeah. Right, so what I would do, once you've pinned that in place, and as I say, just take your time going round the corners, but before you, you stitch the, the top, the zip bit to, the, to this bit, I would just stitch it round to hold it yeah. within the seam allowance, okay? So you won't see the seam allowance in the end. I'm hoping we've just got enough time just to... Even just do a little bit. Ooh, we've, got, we've got three minutes. Oh. Is that all we've got? Yeah, it's gone really quickly. And as you're stitching round the corner, you you just need to make sure that that the piping fits nicely round the corner. So I tend to hold that with a pin. So, do you know when you're back again? I don't as yet. I've just given my dates that I'm available right. um, in December. So I'm hoping I've, I can um, come back in December. Well, I will be able to come back in December. And what are you working at at home at the moment? Have you got any projects on the go? Yeah, I'm. I'm sort of get, still getting through some wedding dresses. The poor girls that um, I think some of them have. I thought, do you know what, I'm just going to get married, um, you know, because obviously they can't have any more than 15. I had one poor bride pick up her dress with me yesterday, 
and um, and she's got she's got pipers, flamethrowers, and all sorts oh. of things booked. But of course, she said, "What's the point?" She said, "If there's only going to be fifteen people." Yeah. So I do feel for them. I'm not a political person at all, but um, you know, I, I do sort of feel for her. Right. So that's the piping first sewn on. So what you do then, if you just imagine this is the front and how you would fit this onto the front. So the smaller bit is goes immediately under the piping. Okay, so you find your middle point. This is why your middle point's important. So you match up the notches. Oh, I'm ignoring my own advice. <laughs> So you match up your notches, there you go, and I'll show you with the pins in. So then you've got your piping, you would actually stitch within that seam allowance. Put that a bit further in. So then when that's stitched in, you've then got that going round. Do you know, I like that yellow. So I, I, do I. I'd never put yellow on purple no, to it. so would it's I. It's a bit like... Crocuses. Yeah, <laughs> and and how I'd cut mine out is I'd actually made an eight inch long, uh, just out of the spare fabric of the yellow, so I can actually use that as a handle because yeah, then nice. it all matches in. Yeah. Yeah, maybe yellow's it. And yeah. in, in my mind, I'm redesigning the whole thing. But I, know. I, just, I just love that fabric. Right, I think we've no later time. We need to take you through the fabric bundles that we put together. And thank you very much. You're very welcome. I don't, I hope that's lovely fun helpful. morning again. Yeah. Um, so, well, the, the fabrics bundle that Rachel was using was this one. So, the original one sold out now. But we do have. It's almost like pansies, aren't they? Are they pansies? They're very pretty. Packed petals, it's called. Um, with the yellow fabric. So half a metre of each of those, which is far too much. But we don't, we don't cut fat quarters, so you, you have to have half a metre whether you want it or not. Um, so two half metres, and you've got your iron interfacing, and you've got your rick-rack. You need to buy your own zips. Have a look on the website. And that's £15.99 is the price there. Um, then we had the pink bundle, which is this one, which is Juliet Roses. So this is a little bit more country kitchen, country, no, country garden kind of look, I think, with this one. So you've got gorgeous little ditzy roses and you have the pink spot. So that's going to be a nice contrast for your binding and your lining. Far too much interfacing and for some reason blue rickrack. Um, for £12.99, that one. I see how they've done that. Personally, we've got, we've got, well, it says it's coming with the blue, so you're going to get the blue, so that's that. Um, but if you don't, I mean, you don't have to put the rip rack on, you don't have to put the piping around there um, at all. So if you find that easier, it's nice to have that little border, I think, of the piping, but it, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, so you could just save that for something else and not put, or put some ribbon across it, but that look nice. But I think you've already got, to be honest, you've got the fuss of the piping, you've got the fuss of the quilting, and I know it's in the instructions, but I don't personally think you need it. But there, are, but you get it, you've got it anyway. Um, so that's the pink. Then we have, should we do the, oh no, that's sold out. We've got a spotty one. Which we have a purple dot and then the lilac. It's a little bit more snowy, isn't it? There are random spots in this one. And then you have your iron-on interfacing again. And this time you've got your dark red rick rack. And that's £15.99. So we've gone so quickly today. Um, our early bird has sold out completely. So well done for getting hold of those. Um, it's not a noisy machine actually here, I think it's because microphones are so close to the machine as you're sewing, it just amplifies the sound, so it is actually quite quiet here. Um, Debbie's looking, oh, I, hmm. I'm sure that Rachel will go through um, all of your comments and questions afterwards, Debbie, and um, she might tell you where she got her address from. Um, she's on the fans page as well, apparently, so I'm sure she'll let you know where she got her address from. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> so we need to get robin fabric and we need to get uh, that dressmaking pattern because that'd do really well wouldn't it um okay so that's about the end of we've got more sewing coming up in the next hour as well but it's not live so we do a repeat at the uh, the 12 o'clock show and then coming up tomorrow this is what we have for you so i tell you <laughs> fabrics um, at eight o'clock in the morning, um, <laughs> we're very romantic with these show names. At nine o'clock, the Bargello pillowcase with Sally Ann Harrison, and at ten o'clock, we've got quilting tools. I like tools. I like tool shows because it, sometimes you can find something that you didn't even know you needed. Um, at ten o'clock, it's Christmas lights quilt. Oh, that sounds nice with Sally Ann again, and fabrics galore will be a repeat at twelve o'clock. Um, tomorrow as well. Um, I'm going to see you again on ne next Sunday, so I should be here bright and early at eight o'clock in the morning. And don't forget, if you're checking out today, if you want to order anything today, uh, up until midnight tonight, we're going to give you a five pound credit to your account if you spend more than twenty pounds. So I think that's a great deal because that's like twenty five percent, isn't it? Um, it will come on the first of November, so don't expect to see that on your account straight away. Um, oh, Glynis has just got back. Well, I'm going now, Glynis. Um, <laughs> enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You enjoy the rest of your day as well. Um, so what are you going to be doing for the rest of the day? A bit of sewing. Have we inspired you? Um, if you like me, I'll be sewing for the rest of the week because that's just what happens in my life. Um, in, I'm not in my new studio yet, though. I need to get Tinternet down there first. And then we've got the offices as well. We're expanding at short hours. Mm. Oh, yes. um, so yeah, I'm going to be very busy sewing, um, but I'd be lovely to catch up next week if you like on Sunday morning and um, let me know what you've been doing all week. Send in requests as well if you've got specific things that you've seen that maybe you can't source or you've got an idea, then we're always open to things like that. So drop us a message, send us an email, let us know what you want. It's always nice to have your feedback. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your week and I shall see you again next weekend. Bye bye.